it seems like they use everybody as a receiver on their entire offense. And you just can't single out any, any one particular player. And uh, Ryan Sipes has been having one heck of a year. You've had a chance to look at their defense on film. What do you think? Uh, all I can say is that you know their personnel hasn't changed very much since I've you know we I don't we don't play them every year but we've played we played them last year and in '77 and a lot of the faces are the same a lot have changed but I, I know they play the physical team and and when I look at their defense uh, you know I look at their linebackers and their defensive line it was specifically their linebackers that's usually who I'm keyed up against either in pass protection or, or run blocking and and they're they're all good. This playoff game against the Oakland Raiders will challenge Brian Sipes' offense against the Raiders' opportunistic defense. Since Jim Plunkett took over for the injured Dan Pastorini, the Oakland Raiders have been 8-2, losing only to Philadelphia and Dallas. Even in defeat, Plunkett managed to throw an 86-yard touchdown pass to speedster Cliff Branch. Branch was a world-class sprinter at the University of Colorado and is a constant deep threat. Plunkett has another excellent receiver in Bob Chandler, the 10-year veteran acquired from Buffalo in the offseason. Chandler makes up for a lack of speed by knowing how to feel his way through a defensive backfield, as Denver's Lewis Wright discovered. In the four-year period between 1975 and 78, Chandler had 220 receptions, more than any other player in the NFL. But his extraordinary hands are what separates Chandler from other receivers. Just ask the Dolphins. The Raiders have lacked a running back with outside speed in recent years. But Kenny King has rectified that deficiency in 1980. He gained nearly 800 yards despite missing several games with injuries. His longest touchdown run went for 89 yards against the San Diego Chargers. King was almost a forgotten man in the Jack Tatum deal with the Houston Oilers, but opposing teams find him easy to remember now. King is a product of the College of Great Runners, the University of Oklahoma. Arthur Whittington showed some explosive speed of his own with this 89-yard kickoff return against the Bengals. With Whittington and King going outside and Mark Van Egan pounding the inside, the Raiders have their most effective running game in years. The Browns' defense must prepare very diligently for this offensively buried team. As much a trademark of the Raiders as their quick-striking offense is their punishing defense. Besides being a wild man, John Matusak is a very big one at 6'8", 280 pounds. The Eagles' Ron Jaworski experienced the feeling of being up close and personal with Big John. Without doubt, the star performer on a stellar defensive unit has been cornerback Lester Hayes, number 37. His league-leading 13 interceptions, the second-highest season total in NFL history, has helped turn the Raiders around this year. And the Browns hope to turn back Oakland's Super Bowl hopes and launch a quest of their own. The Cleveland Browns got here with a great offense behind quarterback Ryan Sipes passing. He threw for 30 touchdowns this year, had one of the great seasons of any quarterback in National Football League history. The Raiders, an interesting contrast, it's been a great defense that's carried them to this AFC Divisional Playoff game. Last week against Houston, the great Lester Hayes picked off two, took this one back for a touchdown. The Browns got here with offense, the Raiders with defense. And the weather is the 12th man in this game today at Cleveland. Temperature at game time, zero. Wind chill this morning, 37 degrees below zero. So the weather is a tremendous and awesome presence that is very definitely going to affect play. Good afternoon, everyone, from Cleveland Stadium. I'm Don Crickey with John Brody. John, the Raiders with their defense, the Browns with their offense. But really, when you look back at the outset of the season, it's surprising now how well they did. A lot of people were picking them third in their respective divisions. Don, I think the reason they're both here is that they both showed that they were contenders, number one, but that they played well in the latter half of the season. Jim Plunkett, first for Oakland, came on and got them all started. Their defense picked it up after he got the momentum rolling. On the other side of the coin, Brian Seip had one of the great years that's ever been 
ever been in the National Football League. Statistics only tell a small part of that. So for both these teams to be here when they were picked to be mediocre and last is an accomplishment in itself. Interesting attitudes on the two teams. They're both very loose clubs. Brian Seif, the Cleveland quarterback, says everybody talks about him being a loose player under pressure. He said, our whole team is a loose team under pressure. We've got guys, they all want the ball when the game's on the line. And the Raiders are always loose. These Pirates come in here ready to take on anybody, anytime, in any condition. Well, they're going to be a little puckered, I'll tell you, when they come out here. I don't care how loose they were in the locker room, which they were. Their, their style of, of, of personality has not changed. The people have changed greatly. I think the team that keeps their composure and does the things under awful conditions that nobody expects them to do will come out on top, and I don't know who that'll be. Well, this is the coldest game, coldest playoff game since that famous Dallas Green Bay game back in 67. It is really something, but a huge crowd is here, and we're just about set to go with the Raiders and the Cleveland Browns. The Raiders coming in having already won the AFC wild card game. They come in with a record now in this season of 12 and 5. The Cleveland Browns, champions of the tough AFC Central, 11 and 5. The Browns called by their owner Art Modell, a team of overachievers under Sam Ratigliano. You very seldom, John, hear any players speaking glowingly about a head coach is due to Cleveland Browns and Sam Ratigliano. Well, Don, I think he has turned it around so convincingly in such a short period of time. He's the sort of fellow that the bigger the game, the more enthusiastic he is and the more he gets you ready to play it. I don't think he's one of those who concerns himself with worrying about the outcome so much as preparing his group for the game itself. And I'd say on the other side of the coin, Tom Flores does the same thing and the personality of the two teams is such, I think it's a good indication of why they're here. Well, Flores has done a great job too. You don't hear enough about Tom Flores in his second year as the head coach of the Raiders, but in all those great seasons, the Elton Raiders have had 16 consecutive winning seasons. No team in the National Football League has done that in the history of the league. Flores has been the offensive coordinator. He's planned all the game plans over the years, the recent years, and now he's the head man. The Raiders are ready, you can be sure, and so are the Browns. Windshield, minus 30 some odd degrees, 37 at the outset. The up back takes the kickoff, doesn't get too far with it. Todd Christensen got the ball, got across the 30-yard line to about the 31. So Jimmy Plunkett now comes out to quarterback the Raiders with Kenny King and Mark Van Egan. He'll be a big factor in this game, the runners. Cliff Branch and Bob Chandler, the wide receivers. Raymond Chester, the tight end. The great offensive line of the Raiders. Art Shell and Gene Upshaw on the left side. Dave Dalby at center. Nicky Marvin and Henry Lawrence on the right side. The Raiders set to go. First play from scrimmage. And they are starting up early in Cleveland. An unbelievable following of the Cleveland Browns. It's rejuvenated the city. Picked up the whole community. The Browns are the heroes of Cleveland. And right now the Brown defense doesn't give much up. Nor does the playing field, which is rock hard. As the Raiders go to Mark Van Egan. And he got ahead for maybe a yard. Clearly they have it spotted. He got to about the line of scrimmage. Cleveland Young on the defensive line, except for Alzado, Marshall Harris and Henry Bradley, the nose tackle, along with Alzado, good linebackers in Charlie Hall, Robert L. Jackson, Dick Ambrose, and Clay Matthews. Bolton had a great year at the left corner. Morell's a young player on LSU. They liked him a lot. Darden and Scott, the safeties, experienced and good. Second down and over nine. Plunkett stands in, lets it go long, and Jim Plunkett wasn't anywhere close to his antenna receiver. He was looking at Kenny King coming out of the backfield. That I think you're going to see an awful lot of things change throughout the course of the game as the players realize how, how good their footing is or on the other side of the coin, how poor it is. The type of patterns you're going to see run are the type that don't take a lot of movement, not a lot of pattern running, anything where a guy gets going in one direction, across the flow, keep the defensive backs making their movements as, as sharply as possible because you're not going to have any footing. That's all there is to it. Had the field covered, but when it came off, the wind whipped down and killed into a rock hard playing surface on third down and nine. Plunkett takes a deep look, goes way over Chandler, and as the ball came overhead, Ron Bolton put a slug on Bobby Chandler. Al Davis told us early, John, that he got Bob Chandler for one big reason. He's a cold weather player from his years at Buffalo. He catches it in cold weather, but not one like this. It's too not He's one of the few fellas, I think, who will run his patterns better than most players will. They're going to double on Branch. They don't want to let him loose. It's going to be very hard executing all day long. You're going to see Bob Chandler in a position to catch a lot of balls. It's getting the execution done that will be the, the tough part. On the other side of the coin, 
Cleveland's got their, their work cut out for them, too, because they got to this playoff because they put the ball up in the air. And the conditions today do not indicate that. Well, now we're going to have a punt from the Oakland Raiders, Ray Guy. That's good. He gets off a punt, doesn't carry too deep. It's going to be taken by Keith Wright. Crosses the 30. He's caught. Ball is blown dead at the 30-yard line. There's going to be some turnovers. You can count on that. Ray Guy with that absolutely unbelievable punting day against Houston in the wild card game, and he kicked nine for an average of over 51 yards, kicked that one 44. Brian Seif, the number one quarterback this season in the NFL at quarterback. Mike Pruitt, a big back from Purdue, and Calvin Hill, the veteran, will be the starting runners for the Browns. Dave Logan, Reggie Rucker, and Ozzie Newsom, all with over 50 receptions, the receivers. Good offensive line. They don't let Seif get hurt very often. Deacon, Shepard, DeLeo, and DeLamalier. And Cody Risen. Cleveland with its first possession. First down and 10 for the Browns at their 30. Seif goes right after the deep throw, and he's going to Logan. Screened off the ball by Dwayne Osteen. So the Browns come out pitching. As you were pointing out, John, they got here throwing the ball, and Seif ready to go despite the weather. I don't think there's going to be any change of of the way they attack, whether or not they throw the ball a lot, they will throw the ball an awful lot because Oakland would love to have a team running the ball on first and 10 because guys like Matusa, Kinlaw, you name it, those down linemen have been very strong against the run all year. They've shut teams down to 40 yards a game less than they did last year. There's the defensive secondary. The Raiders have intercepted more than any team in the NFL. They have 35 interceptions as a team. On second and ten, Calvin Hill gets the call, and the big back from Yale takes it straight ahead to the 35-yard line, a gain of four yards on the play. It'll be second down at six. Dave Browning made the knockdown, went to right end. But two Zach Kinlaw and Browning across the defensive front of Oakland. Don, the offensive line Cleveland has three players going to the Pro Bowl. They match up very well against Oakland's defensive front four. And if you don't handle them at the line of scrimmage, they will dictate the outcome of a football game as they did last, last week against Houston. Third down and about five for Cleveland. Ball just across their 35-yard line. There's no score early in the first quarter. Sight stands in, sets up, gets time, puts it out there, and a free ball is in the secondary incomplete. And then to Calvin Hill, and that ball was skirt free in the secondary. Don, you'll notice Calvin Hill was was a ball carrier on the second play of the game an intended pass receiver on third down they've started him today for the first time all year for two reasons one so he can protect brian Seif. number two so he can run pass routes he'll carry the ball a little bit but he's in there because this is going to be a day in their opinion they want the experience they want the guy that is not going to let someone free on brian Seif. now back to receive the punt keith moody for the oakland raiders Johnny Evans into punt for the Browns. Hits the ball at his 25. Looks like somebody got a piece of it. It goes downfield. Takes a Cleveland roll low. And a hop down inside the 30-yard line. Roll down to the 28. And there, the Raiders will go on offense for a second time in this playoff game. Johnny Evans, 39-yard per punt and throughout this season for Cleveland. Sam Tigliano was particularly concerned about Evans' counterpart, Ray Guy, and his kicking game. We'll be back at Cleveland in a moment. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey back at Cleveland Stadium. The sun is out, but the wind chill has the temperature on the playing field at minus 30 degrees. The Oakland Raiders have the ball for the second time. First and 10. Plunkett hands off, goes to Van Egan. And Van Egan, one of the quickest fullbacks in the league at hitting the hole, as offensive linemen will tell you, has a hard time driving ahead on a frozen playing surface. Marshall Harris, the left end for the Browns, knocked him down. So the Raiders come up with second and nine. Anybody that's quick hitting the line today is going to get a check. I don't think that anyone's going to be too quick. Getting off, just getting off in the snap of the ball, making sure your footing's okay, will it give you a chance to take advantage of someone else who might fall, and that's what's going to dictate the breaks. Second and over nine. Bob Chandler comes wide to the right. Left branch to the left. Swing pass goes to Kenny King. And King of the Raiders loses the ball as he goes out of bounds. Along either sideline, it is sheer hard packed ice where the tarp wasn't covering, and there's portions of the playing field that have some ice on it. Froze up once the tarp came off. 
It is a tough track. You'll notice Cleveland is going to make Jim Plunkett throw it off to his back. It's something he doesn't do very often. When he does, they are very effective. He's just not geared to be one of those nickel and dime type quarterbacks. They try to attack a defense. Cleveland's not going to allow him to do that. You'll see them in no man-to-man -man situations early. He's got to come off to his backs and hope something good happens. Arthur Whittington is now in the backfield of Oakland, along with Van Egan. Third down and five for the Raiders. Bucket lets her go long. Chandler going for the ball. It's intercepted by Cleveland's Ron Bolton. He was their leading interceptor this year. That was his seventh, so the Browns get the first turnover. Although Chandler fought him for the ball all the way down, but Ron Bolton gets the interception here. Watch it again, John. I'll tell you, Don, that was as good as a punt. Very few people can punt the ball that far as far as Jim just threw it. Obviously, it's always fun to intercept the ball. You, you gear yourself down as a defensive secondary player to pick up anything that comes in your area. Ron Bolton, on that particular occasion, was 15 yards back of the line of scrimmage. Here is Ron Bolton's interception. And the Browns have their second possession. They'll start from their 27-yard line. Again, it was, it, was a, it was an attempt to attack a defensive man playing one-on-one -on -one with Bob Chandler. You have to try that, but it was a hook-and-go. Bolton was buying none of it. Way beyond, way beyond Chandler when the ball was in the air. Ron Bolton, the only guy that's caught a ball so far today. Here's a handoff on the first down from scrimmage and driving straight ahead is the big Purdue fullback, Mike Pruitt. Over 1,000 yards rushing again this year. 4.2 a carry. And he was best leading receiver for Cleveland, 63 receptions. And that still misses his most important ingredient, his ability to get all the assignments correct, the ability to block for Brian Seif. That's how he originally got into the starting lineup as a blocker for Greg Pruitt. He came on so well, ran the ball so well that he's become a mainstay. Brian Seif, Mike Pruitt, both really developed as football players when Sam Rotigliano came in here. They've been the keys on offense. Here's a handoff. Again, they go to Pruitt on a second down and six carry. Pruitt takes the ball out to the 34-yard line. John, we were talking about how nobody was looking for these teams at the outset of the season to make the playoffs. And even when the season began, it didn't look that way. They both lost three of their first five. And that's right. However, the whole personality of Oakland changed at mid-season. Their defense, you know, that's a very young defense. And contrary to what a lot of people think of, in the transition that's taken place in Oakland, a lot of the insurgence of new players has been defensively, and they have played so well. The guys like Lester Hayes, uh, Matt Millen, a fellow that they thought was in between a linebacker and a defensive come on they've let him do what he does best and they've, they've just come up with an amazing defense now it's third down and about three for the cleveland browns no score in the first quarter they go to Pruitt. raiders don't get much he had to drive the ball up to the 40 to the 37 yard line and we'll see if he got there as they unfile john what about the football in playing conditions like this is it hard enough well, they could play without it <laughs> i mean it's very hard to hang on to obviously now it's like a brick in certain conditions and they will try to throw the ball around because Cleveland has to do that. They've got a first down. Excellent offensive line search. Got them that. Right now, when Sipe can throw a little screen, if he can run some draws, anything that's misdirection, don't make anybody change their own direction, but get the defense to change theirs. Sipe is a master at dinking and donking the ball around the infield, and if there's an edge, he might have it. That was our first first down of the game. Ryan Sipe cuts down the Cleveland Browns at their 37. No score in the first quarter. Sipe sets up. Looking long. Guns it over the middle. And Dave Logan had the ball and lost it. Now, Logan's one of the most sure-handed players in the league. And he saw he was unable to take it. Don, you can't, you can't catch the ball in your hands. The ball is too hard. It feels like a frozen puck to any wide receiver at this time. If they can catch the ball in their body, they're okay. Now, this fella just, he, his whole personality is to catch the ball in his hands rather than put his hands out after the ball he's got gloves on he's trying to make sure he can cradle the ball it hits him in the stomach coming a little harder than he hoped they have to rehuddle second down and 10 Ryan Seif comes into this game completing over 61 percent of his throws for over 4100 yards 30 touchdown throws and he was only intercepted 14 times he graded out as the number one quarterback in the league and he'll start for the AFC in the Pro Bowl Hand off, but Mike Pruitt, coming out of his three-point, lost his footing, goes down to the 36-yard line. He'll be third and about 12. Reggie Kinlaw, fellow from Oklahoma. Here's another young, standout defensive lineman for the Raiders. He's taken that middle, handling it very well. 
Now, in order for anybody to do well, if you're a Cleveland offensive football player, you know you've got to handle the middle. It's Dalby's problem on, on when the Raiders are on offense. It's DeLeon's problem when the, when the Browns are on offense. Ed Hendricks, Matt Millen, Bob Nelson, Rod Martin, the linebackers for the Raiders. Actually, two of the linebackers, Hendricks and Millen, our biggest defensive linemen. Sipe on third and 12, swings it out. Calvin Hill makes the turn, but Millen catches him, the rookie from Penn State. He's the biggest linebacker in the league from a weight standpoint, 260, and his, next to him is Hendricks, who's the tallest at 6'7". Don, and the concern about Millen is that can he cover anyone on pass routes? That time in a third down situation, they left him in the ball game. He covers Calvin Hill from, from the middle of the field all the way to the sideline. He's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, covers him very well, forces him to the sideline, and makes the tackle. But the Browns come up way short, and so they will go back to the punt now. Johnny Evans to hit the ball, standing at this 26-yard line. Keith Moody is back all alone at the 20-yard line of the Raiders. Good snap by Sullivan. End over end kick. It'll be tough to field, and it takes again a Cleveland bounce. Well, that one had legs on it. Down to the nine. Moody picks it up, but the Browns sweep him under. So the Raiders start out for a third time, but in a hole. There's something. They're giving, their, they're giving the punter just a little bit too much credit. It's a 50-yard punt. Should have been caught for a 30-yard stop. That's a very important phase of this game. Get up there and catch that ball before it hits the ground, because if you don't, you might find yourself first and ten inside your own ten. Set to go at Cleveland. Don Fricky with John Brody. Oakland Raiders with their third possession. So far, no one has been close to the end zone. The Raiders are now, but to their own. They're backed up to their 11 after the punt. Brown shut down the run. Van Egan has to go straight ahead, and Nick Ambrose fills the gap nicely. Ambrose filled the gap, but they're running at Lyle Alzado, something they don't really want to do. But their plus point over the years has been Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. Uh, Alzado mentioned early before the ball game that whenever I play against Shell and Upshaw, I'm not the same for three weeks. He said, I don't know what effect it has on them, but I do know how it handles me. It's a war down there. Upshaw in his 13th year has never missed a game. Playing in his 250th consecutive game. And uh, Kenny King and the Browns don't give him a thing. The Browns have done well all season stopping the run. We're taking a look at Dick Ambrose. Sam Bogosian said they've got some fine linebackers, but the guy that holds them all together is Ambrose. He's always in the wrong spot if you're offensively minded. He's always sitting where your ball carrier is trying to run the ball. He's been underrated for a long period of time. Maybe that's why they're so good against the run. Ambrose has been underrated for a long time. Came out of Virginia as a 12th round draft choice back in 75, and he's been a consistent, very, very valuable player to the Cleveland defensive effort all these seasons. Now in his sixth year. Pluck it on third down and seven throws. He's got a man open, and then he loses the ball. Clay Matthews is there to hit Kenny King just as it came in. Okay, Pluck has thrown the ball pretty well on third down occasions twice. However, it's just as hard to handle as it is to get the ball there. It doesn't seem like either team is willing to suck it up and run the ball, hoping for a turnover. They both know they've got to create something. It's a healthy viewpoint, but very tough to execute. Well, the Browns defense holds again. It was a defense that gave up more yards than any defense in the AFC, but it didn't give up a lot of points. Again, let's check the punt returners. They're giving Ray Guy an awful lot of credit when the ball is as cold as it is. They're both playing 40 to 45 yards from the line of scrimmage. Under normal conditions, I can understand it, but they better get somebody up a little closer to pick off the short one. The winner of this game will, of course, be going to San Diego to play the Chargers next Sunday in the AFC Championship game here on NBC. Here is the punt. Ray Guy hits it well down the field. Dino Hall fields it back at his 40. Makes the turn to the 45, and Dino Hall, not big but very quick, takes the ball up the far sideline. And the Browns start out with their best initial field position of any of their drives, a 46-yard punt, a 7-yard return by Dino Hall. So with the wind chill in the minus 30. We'll be returning to Cleveland Stadium after this. 1980 was the first divisional title year for the Cleveland Browns in 71. This is their first playoff team since 72 when they went as a wild card. But it's been a storied tradition. Football in Cleveland, a hallmark franchise in the NFL. The great teams, the Motley and Otto Graham teams. And this stadium has been the site of some of the great games in the history of the league. Great championship games. Now with no score on the board, Brian Seif takes a long look. He's looking at Dave Logan. Logan had the ball and lost it. 
With 6.48 to play in the first quarter, the Browns try to strike deep and almost succeed. Well, Don, you see, catching a football is just part of, an, part of a movement. It's not a conscious thought to catch the football. You do that, it's automatic. All the intention is on a, on a way to run your pattern and get open. Today, the game changes. You've got to put all your attention on catching the football. It's not so hard to get open because everybody's slipping and sliding out there. But when that ball gets in your area, to hang on to it is a problem. A real problem. And it's not going to get any better. The Browns now come out second down and ten. First team that gets in the end zone might have won the game when this one is finally decided. Well, I think the players are getting more accustomed to it than less, and that surprises me. Sight throws long again. Calvin Hill is out there. And the ball literally bounced off the helmet of Rod Martin. Calvin Hill, what a story he is. Came to Cleveland in 78 as a free agent after his great seasons at Dallas and Washington. And we mentioned he runs about as precise a route as any back going down the pike. They got him because they knew he was a, a very experienced, good blocking, good receiving halfback. And when you have a guy like Brian Seip, to have a, a halfback like, like Calvin Hill is something you just can't replace. When you catch 50 balls as a halfback, you know you've helped some. Calvin Hill has been a great one. Six touchdown receptions this year for the Browns. They call him the pinch hitter. He comes in and hits the home run for him, making those receptions. Third down and ten. Sipes only completed one of six. Look at the interception by the great Lester Hayes. The man's a phenomenal football player. Lester Hayes with his 16th interception of this season. He had two last week and 13 in the regular season, and he had four other ones that were negated by penalties. Don, when you put... When you see Lester Hayes, he's playing bump and run. Now, if you're a quarterback, you say, hey, he's playing bump and run all over the field. I've got to be able to get to Reggie Rucker. He's got him one-on-one -on -one all over the field. He might even fall down. Lester Hayes intimidates people. It's why he's gained 13 interceptions this year is because teams are reluctant to let him get away with that. However, he's winning at his own game, having the greatest year of any cornerback for several years. He and Hendricks have been so outstanding, the Raiders have just gone with him. Well, they challenged Lester Hayes, and they came up empty, and now the Raiders hit the ball back. An intercept, interception each way so far in the game, and a first and ten play. Robert L. Jackson comes in and makes the stop on Kenny King. You remember Ron Bolton had the interception earlier. Game clock down to 6.20 to play in the first quarter. No score on the board or anything close to it so far. You see King running back to the huddle almost as, as hard as he ran to the line of scrimmage. I tell you, they're trying to stay warm, trying to pump themselves up, trying to convince themselves it's not cold out there, and it's a hard thing to do. They truck some heated benches in from Philadelphia. That's only mild help, though, in these conditions. It's now second down and seven, and the Browns shut down the run. They go back to Kenny King, the Oklahoma runner. They had a 4.4 per carry average this season. Knocked down by Charlie Hall. You know what you might think looking into this ball game? You say, boy, this really has to hurt Brian Seip and his offense. I think it helps their defense more than it hurts Brian's offense. What is Cleveland? They're good against the run, extremely suspect against the pass. They've allowed 3,800 yards plus, but when it comes to somebody running over the top, uh, nobody's had success doing it. They stopped the long pass and they stopped the run. Marshall Harris, no flag is down, though. He got back in time, apparently. Plunkett going long. Cliff Branch is out there. Through his arm, Branch had a step on the defender, Clinton Burrell. And the Raiders almost hit the big one. Both these quarterbacks have fired the ball very well. When you throw the ball accurately at 40 yards, the wind doesn't seem to be as much as a, of a factor as it was at kickoff time. You know you can throw it. Hanging on again is a problem. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WKYC TV3 live in the Browns locker room after the game. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey, Mike Adamley also with us here at Cleveland Stadium for this AFC playoff game. The Oakland Raiders and the Cleveland Browns scoreless in the first quarter, 5-14 to play in it. As the Raiders punt again. Ray Guy didn't get this one downfield too far, but they're all so tough to handle and the Browns won't challenge the ball. They'll let it roll dead and it goes down at about the 30-yard line of Cleveland. The Browns with the ball again, this time starting out at their 30. That was only a 31-yard punt by Ray Guy. He got a bad bounce, though. It could have gone right down inside the 10. Nobody was there to field it. Actually hopped back toward the Raiders. Sight on first down, down looking long. Man is out there. Reggie Rucker had his fingertips on the ball. So we've had a lot of near misses in the game as both quarterbacks challenging deep. 
Despite playing conditions with temperatures, minus 30 chill factor. And who were they challenging? They're challenging Lester Hayes. He just comes up by comes up with an interception. The next time they get the ball, they say, let's have one more go at Lester. If he wants to get his 15th of the year, let him try. We think we can beat him. And a lot of receivers do beat Lester Hayes. It's just that he beats them on occasion, too. Actually, Lester, John, his next one's going to be a 17th now after what he's done in the playoffs. He has three already in the playoffs. He's got with his 13 in the regular season. What he's a year. About six drops and four called back, too. Actually, a 95-yard interception return for a touchdown against Miami, negated by a penalty. On second and 10, Cleveland goes to the run, and behind Alana Lear and Cody Risen, Mike Pruitt rockets ahead across the 35-yard line, got the ball close to the 37. So there's a gain on the play of about seven yards. It's really yeah. the best offensive running play we've seen so far today. There has just been almost no offensive movement. When you have no, when you have no footing, to get a defensive lineman on your shoulder and move him backwards is a very tough thing to do. Well, those linemen, John, knew they were in for a bad day when they came out to warm up, got down in the three-point, took off, and fell flat in their face. Right. The two-point stance may come into vogue before this game's over. <laughs> Third down and three for Cleveland. Ryan Sight goes to the draw. Pruitt working hard, but the Raiders seem to knock him down just short of the first down. It'll be a yard or so short, brings up fourth down, and with that down comes putter Johnny Evans. Matt Millen made the knockdown mentioned draws and screens early the problem with draws right at this time is that the linebackers are not respecting throw if you don't respect throw you can't get those linebackers out of the hole we've only had one first down in this game so far 349 left to go in the first quarter the big phase of the game so far has been the handling of the punts and not only by the defense but also from center to, to kicker Keith Moody is back for the Raiders Line drive downfield, but again it takes a Cleveland roll, and Moody won't fool with it. So Johnny Evans hit that thing about eight feet in the air, but on the frozen turf it kept on walking and goes down inside the 30. A 34-yard punt as it ended up. Not bad. It was net. That's right. No return. Ryan Seif being attended to or attending to himself on the sidelines. A lot of the players were wearing scuba diver gloves coming out. Keith Wright, one of the return men for Cleveland, was catching the ball very well before the game with him. Other ones had on those golf clubs. They came off quickly. Most of them seem to be going to nothing of the scuba dive. Right now it's going to be first down and 10 for Oakland. Off goes Kenny King breaks it, gets across the 30 and out to the 32 yard line. So the Raiders come out with a slant run, and King does well. Clarence Scott, the strong safety, made the knockdown. Kenny King, one of those Houston Oilers who came to Oakland. I'm waiting for some to break, Don. I know it's very difficult to move the ball as we see Kenny King pick up a six yard gain, which is a pretty good first and ten. I think something's about to break. Very few defenders have fallen down, and the receivers are having all the problems at the moment. I don't think that'll last. It's second down and five. Raiders try the run again, and nothing's there. They've had one interception for each side. Ron Bolton picked one off for Cleveland. Lester Hayes got one for Oakland. No fumbles yet, though, but there's going to be some, you can be sure. <laughs> if there aren't, it'll be a surprise to everyone. Looks like a jump center in the middle of the line. Everybody's standing straight up. Very difficult to make movement anyway. Bob Chandler comes out wide right now. Left French, who went deep and almost made a connection earlier, is wide left on a third down and three play. Look at, look at Chandler. Now throws over the middle to his tight end, and the ball is caught and lost. Raymond Chester had it at the 42-yard line and lost it. Tom Darden popped in the free safety, 27. All right, Tom Darden hasn't had a lot of action all year because people have not tried to pick on him personality of Oakland is to throw the ball deep. They haven't done an awful lot of it except on the outsides all day long. They get Raymond Chester open. Plunkett finds a way to get him the ball. But any contact that's made as the ball gets there, keep, you can't grab a handle. There's no way to keep that ball when you're hit. No way at all. Now if they put back two punt returners, Dino Hall and Keith Wright. Ray Guy set himself up at his 20. Putting so tough, moving into the ball just to strike it. Bounce came close to a block. Wright takes it in those scuba diver gloves, back of the 20. And he's, he's got it. He's got a chance. He's got it. He's got Finally, he's down the 39-yard line. Wright 
had beaten that last man, he'd have gone a long, long way. As it was, he returned to 19 yards. 155 left to play in the first quarter. They get everybody caught, Don, coming straight up the middle. They just sealed off a little bit to the outside. Wright's trying to find a hole. Can't find it quite well enough. 46-yard punt, 19-yard return. Derek Jensen finally made the play. Pete Wright had to be helped off the field after the play. You're playing on concrete out there today. 155 to go in the first quarter. No score on the board. The Browns champions of the AFC Central line up again. First and 10 at their 40. Two wide receivers set to the right. Two big backs behind Sight. Pruitt and Calvin Hill. Sight takes a look. Throws it over the middle and Reggie Rucker makes the big play for the Cleveland Browns down to the Oakland 40. Again, Don, we mentioned I'm expecting something to happen offensively because I'm surprised the quarterback has not had the problem holding on to the ball and delivering it that the receiver has, catching it and holding on. And when the quarterback can throw it throughout the period of the day, the receivers will find a way to get their, their hands on it and keep containment. Both quarterbacks have thrown the ball pretty well. Seif is not having any problem with his grip, but if you don't have a problem with your grip and you can get back and set up, you can find the receiver. Well, that was the biggest offensive game of the day, a 20-yard completion. Now, the Browns go to the run, and Pruitt takes it off tackle inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Don Cockcroft, the kicker for Cleveland, playing in his sixth playoff year. 13-year veteran was talking about kicking conditions on a field like this. He said one thing is you don't get the long field goal. The ball doesn't travel far. No, it won't. You'll notice on the punts, those balls are are going 12 yards sometimes and starting to run. Ray Guy kicked two over 40 yards, and those are horrendous boots in this weather. Well, we've seen so far the best way to get there to the end zone is to throw the ball because the runners haven't gotten much. I think second down and seven now. Seif takes a look, swings it out. Ozzie Newsom, the tight end, takes the ball down at the 32-yard line, and he's very close to a first down and a second and eight play. We'll notice a little bit later how Brian Seif's drop has changed a little bit. He is really oozing back into his throwing area. The footing is a little bit difficult, but the receiver can get open. You can see Rod Martin standing still. It's pretty hard for him to get any traction. Ozzie Newsom runs a quick pattern, gets the ball to him. Simple little pattern to run, easy to hit, hard to hold on. Big Ozzie Newsom, the third-year tight end from Alabama. The man Bear Bryant called the greatest catcher we ever had at Alabama. Such spreads the work around. Rucker, Logan, Newsom out with over 50 catches, and Mike Pruitt had 63. Third and one, and the Browns power the ball at the Oakland Raiders. Pruitt, six foot one, 227 pounds. Drives into linebacker Bob Nelson, and the Browns drive on. They went right over their own strength. DeLeon, Shepard, DeLamalure, those three fellas have been pretty good for quite a while. Got good surge on third and one. Seven seconds left in the quarter. I think this is the last play. They're trying to get one off. Right on third down, looking to the end zone. Rucker's out there. Touchdown! He lost the ball. Reggie Rucker had his hands on it and lost it going out of the end zone. He almost lost himself. He went right in the dugout. Looks like Osteen's trying to help him out. Hey, we mentioned the, the throwers have had good grips on the ball. They put the ball where it, where it has to be thrown if it's going to be caught. Rucker made a fine pattern, just didn't come down with the ball. Back at cold, cold Cleveland. We're ready to start the second quarter of play. The Browns mounting a threat now. They have second down and 10 inside the Raider 30-yard line. No score on the board. Brian Seif takes a look over. Might have checked off. Two wide receivers set left. Raiders up and tight and ready to bump and run. On second and 10, a throw deep. Ozzie Newsom heading for the end zone with the ball, as you see, comes in high. Strong safety Mike Davis running with him for Oakland. Don, again, a crossing pattern. They're putting Mike Davis in an awful bind. They're leaving a free safety back there for Oakland is. But when you have to cover Ozzie Newsom all over the field, if he finds any segment of that field where he can get a little bit of footing, and the players are getting a pretty good feel of that situation now, in the middle of the field there are places where you can plant and break away from a defensive back. That's an awful tough assignment. They've tried to come to Newsom a couple times, haven't been successful yet, but they're going to keep going at it. 
Two for, two for six on third down. It's now third and ten. At the 29. Seif, well attended to again. Has time. Throws. Incomplete. Ted Hendricks was back there. Knocked down Greg Pruitt, who came into the game. Coming out of the backfield was the antenna receiver. Pruitt in for the first time. Greg Pruitt. They threw to Greg Pruitt because on the other side, Lester Hayes did an excellent job on Logan. They wanted to go down the field, and the Raiders are playing a man-to-man, -man, most all over the field right now. They just have to get one person free. They haven't been able to do it. Cleveland coaches said you're assessing the Raiders on film. Their defense isn't complicated. It just executes so well. Cockroft is going to earn his salary if he slips this one in from 47 and a half, 48 yards. Just like kicking a 55-yarder. The inability to throw and catch the ball in this cold weather has been a story so far, and also to kick it as Cockroft, a sure-footed kicker, drives the ball into the end zone, but it doesn't come anywhere close to going through the uprights, and so the first scoring attempt from the placement Comes up way empty and with 14.44 left to play in the first half, we'll be back to Cleveland in a moment. This is Don Crickey with John Brody back at Cleveland. The Raiders haven't made a first down in this game yet. And there hasn't been a penalty called throughout the whole first quarter. That's a rarity. That's right, there's not been any penalties. Plunk it on first down throws and there's a connection. Receiver taking it right in his chest. Raymond Chester gets ahead to the 40-yard line, and the Raiders all of a sudden have their first first down of the game. Robert L. Jackson on the knockdown. Pattern, you very rarely see Raymond Chester run. It's a little, it looks like he's going to go down the field and make a turn. He goes down the field and stops. He's right in between two linebackers. Just as he stopped, Plunkett got him the ball. That's why it looks like he's so wide open. It's against his characteristics. It's against the Oakland patterns. But it works. They're going to have to make shift a few things today. Keith Wright, the punt returner, who was knocked down hard in the playing field, or told has a concussion, and probably won't play again today. Plunkett loses the ball. That's a free football, and Cleveland has it. The Cleveland Browns have the ball inside the 25-yard line of Oakland. So the first fumble recovery of the game is a big, big one. Marshall Harris, the left end, swept up the ball as Plunkett had it knocked free, fading the throw, and the Browns will go first and 10 at the 23-yard line of Oakland. It all took place, Don, for one simple reason. Marshall Harris was the recipient, but it took place because the defensive secondary was playing real deep. Plunkett wanted to go down the field. You can see Bradley, he comes in, gets a piece of the ball. Plunkett did not give him credit for being able to get it loose. He did jar it loose, didn't come off to a back quick enough. As a result, turnover. Got to be tough just to hold that cold ball with everybody. Yeah, but you better it. get it off to your backs. If nobody's open down the field, you better do it quick. It's first down and 10 now for the Cleveland Browns. Seif takes a look. They're really taking care of him. He's going to run with the ball. Ryan Seif is inside the 15-yard line. Down to the 13-yard line. Rod Martin finally got him, but now the Browns are down close. Had the same effect as the draw play. Seif went back trying to throw. Had all his receivers running crossing routes. Seif did not run around laterally. Took whatever hole he found up the middle. Just moved a little bit to his left. When he did so, there was a natural hole opened up. The linebackers cannot commit themselves to getting up on the play as fast as normal. But Tusik finally gets there, gets a piece swiftly. Martin brings him down, but not before they gain a first down. Marshall Harris with the recovery, a former New York Jet. And now Brian Seif with a first down run. Hand off, up the middle, not much there. Going with the ball is Cleo Miller, a big back. He drives the ball down close to the 13-yard line. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cleveland Browns and the National Football League is prohibited. When they start running, Don, Bob Nelson, number 51 for the Raiders, is generally in the middle of the action. He stopped that play for no gain. He's another, another one of those young insertions that the Raiders have put into their defense. Ball down to the 13-yard line now. Bob Nelson, a former Buffalo Bill. Raiders have an awful lot of people they got from other teams as free agents that have turned into fine players when they get in the whole scheme of the Oakland system. Here is a pass into the end zone. Logan fighting for the ball. 
Wayne Osteen fighting for it. And it comes up incomplete. Well, that's an outstanding defensive play by Osteen because Logan was sitting with his eye on the ball the whole time. Osteen's got his back to the ball, carries the club. He sees Logan looking at the ball. He goes right into the area he's looking, almost brings it down for an interception. That's just good defense. He's one-on-one -on -one out there all by himself. Fight for the ball on the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Our producer today for NBC is George Finkel, our director, Ken Fouts. As we now have 12 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the first half. The Browns challenging, but it's so tough to move the ball with frigid temperatures in Ohio. Wind chill this morning was 37 below zero. Third down and 10 for Cleveland. Sight stands in, into the end zone. Rucker going for the ball. He caught it! No, they really got it out of bounds. He held on with the official right there. Said he was not in bounds when he got it. Hey, that's one of those plays that if the, if the field had been dry, he would have been able to slow his momentum down enough to get his other foot in bounds. As it existed, he couldn't do that. He just caught the line with his second foot. The official was right on the play and saw it. But, hey, they're picking on those, those corners. And as long as they try to play a man-to-man, -man, they're going to try and continue picking on them. You see Rucker comes down with one foot there. He can't put his foot down. He's got to put his other foot on the yellow. So now Don Cockcroft will try another field goal, but first we'll watch Rucker again. This is live. Cockcroft setting up for the field goal. No cinch. Paul McDonald holds, and Jerry Sullivan snaps. And the ball is on the way. It is no good. Lester Hayes went to the moon when that one went wide. He jumped about 10 feet in the air. It's one thing to throw the ball down. It's another thing to kick it. It's a totally different feel when it hits your foot. The ball goes like a brick. We've seen punts have problems. We've seen two chances for field goals have problems, and the score remains at nothing to nothing. Don Quickie with John Brody back at Frigid Cleveland. John, what about the quarterback touch in this weather? Well, we've seen them. They've, they've, I think, had very good control of the ball. The receivers have had no control of it. As a result, you need, you need both ends to make things come into a good result. You see Van Egan trying to get somewhere at the line of scrimmage. They've just had trouble moving either the offensive or defensive line for the Browns around. I think the Browns are getting the best at the point of attack right now. As a result, they've had a little bit better field position, but no score has resulted. Well, it's going to be tough. Senior members of the National Football League, Don Cockcroft, has, has had his problems. He was troubled with a sciatic nerve problem earlier. Played well late in the season, and today, this cold, cold ball hasn't been responding to his ticking touch. It's nothing, nothing. They go back to the run now on second down and nine. Kenny King goes wide, and the Cleveland Browns have been sweeping him under. Well, they can go as wide as they want, but when you go wide, the key is being able to cut back against the green when you see the hole. They have not been able to cut back, and when you're running wide with a lot of pursuit following you, the running back is up for grabs. All they have to do is keep everybody coming out at an angle. They'll, they'll eventually run him right out of bounds. Brown offensive line has been moving the ball pretty well at times. Oakland has had virtually no success running it. Brown defense has been taking away the Raiders' gusto with the run. Now Plunkett's going to try to throw it, put it way up, up for grabs. Clinton Burrell goes for the ball and can't hold on. Cliff Branch was downfield. Wasn't anywhere near him. Burrell had a short play on it, but it's so hard to hold on to. That thing came down like a Branch got very lucky right there because he could not find the ball, was going over to Burrell trying to defend the play and had no attention on the ball. He knew that it was a possible interception. He was just trying to break it up and didn't get a call. Heath Wright going off, suffered the mild concussion when his head was banged off the playing field on a punt return. Dino Hall is the only man back now for Cleveland as Ray Guy sets to punt. Fourth down and 12. Ray Guy back at his five-yard line. Browns are getting people close to Ray Guy, and now they drop two more back. High punt didn't carry very far. Dino Hall from the 46. Dino Hall breaks through and gets out to midfield. He fumbled the ball, though, Don, and I don't know who came up with it, but I think Cleveland retained possession. The ball and the weather are great adversaries as much as the Raiders and Oakland are to each other. A 36-yard punt by Ray Guy and a five-yard return by Dino Hall. So the Browns will get the ball back when we return. First and 10 at the Oakland side of the field. 
We have 10-34 left to play in the first half of this AFC Divisional Playoff game at Cold Cleveland. Tom Flores, his Oakland Raiders on defense now. First and 10 Cleveland Browns just across midfield. Brian Seif has been close to some big connections early in this game. One completion of Reggie Rucker in the end zone, but then the official checked his feet and Rucker wasn't in. Here's a throw to Calvin Hill. He can't hold on. That gives you some indication of how that ball's coming in there. And these receivers, you can't prepare yourself to catch a brick, okay? And that's what that ball has to feel like when it hits their hands. I'm surprised, John, how well they're running their patterns. Nobody's fallen down yet. That's right. They're running them softly, both offensively and defensively, trying to keep from losing their footing. If they lose their footing, it's a certain interception. A, a quarterback has to throw the ball when you're on the break. You can't wait till you're open because then you close up. I think that Cleveland's had, the, this is their fourth good field position. If they get no points on the board when everything's going their way early in the ball game, it could get awfully tough later. First score is going to be an awful big one. And of course, this game will keep on going until somebody gets a score. Brian Seip takes a look. Now runs down. Dillon comes up. Seip, got a little guy, stays in bounds, gets the extra yardage. He could have bailed out. Joe DeLamalier gave him a block. Brian Seip took the ball inside the 45 yard line of Oakland. Moving along on Little Cat's feet here. Hey, look, Saipat featured down the field. He wanted, or excuse me, that's Reggie Rucker down the field. He, he would love to get to him, but he's very well covered by Lester Hayes. As he rolls out of the pocket, looking for a little bit more time, he was looking down the field, had to keep, had to hold on to the ball. I'm surprised that two quarterback runs, he's kept on, held on to the ball both times and stayed in bounds. We're getting a penalty. Ben Bright, the referee, the Raiders were offside, so the Browns beneficiaries of a five-yard mark-off against the Raiders. Number First penalty of this game. Lined up in the neutral zone. Second down. You'll see strategy change a little here, too, because we're normally a third and two situation wouldn't be too bad. They get no traction. Third and two is like third down and five if you're running the ball. It's a passing down today. They've got to find a way to get it, get it over that line. The two Pruitts are in the Cleveland backfield now. Greg and Mike, no relation. Greg, the Oklahoma runner, has so many great seasons for the Browns as a rusher and as a pass catcher. Slow this year because of injuries, has a knee problem. But he's always a threat. Second, Greg five. Second down and five for Sight for the Browns. Back to the run. Look at that big back. Ooh. Shoot up the middle. Come inside the 40 and down to the 39-yard line. It looks like Mike Pruitt has a first down for Cleveland. John Matuzak and Dave Browning on the knockdown. Shepard and Deacon just made some room there. On the few occasions where there has been movement at the line of scrimmage, it's been the offensive line of Cleveland that's made it. Mike Pruitt has been the best runner in this game with 28 yards. The Browns down to the 39-yard line of Oakland with a first down. Rucker is wide right. Logan's on the left flank. Newsom's the tight end, but he can go deep, too. Here's a pitch back to Greg Pruitt. And the Raiders get him and throw him down. Hendricks, who's having an all-pro season, came up from the outside linebacker, number 83. He actually had such a good season that several people put him on the ballot as player of the year. Not defensive player of the year, but Jim Thorpe trophy player of the year. And he's one of these guys that has, has put such personality into their defense that it's almost like they're attacking the other team's offense. He's freelanced most of the year. Charlie Sumner's kept everything simple for everybody else. He and Lester Hayes have just made so many turnovers. It's kept everybody off balance. Ted Hendricks, a four-time All-Pro. Of course, only one defensive player has ever received that Jim Thorpe trophy. Alan Page, when he's with the Vikings, did, I think, in 72. Second down and 10. Seif lost the ball. I think he lost it for good. Now he got to it. Ryan Seif says, give Sam all the credit. Sam Rotigliano, he's the miracle worker of this team. But Seif has been a great, great player. Graded out number one among all the quarterbacks. Don, that's the personality of Brian Seif. It's also the reason he took an awful lot of knocks earlier in his career. He's not a finger pointer. He's the kind of guy that takes the responsibility, distributes the credit. But he is a very tough nut. He's one of these guys that comes in and takes responsibility for things when things aren't going too well. You noticed he has not backed off from throwing that ball all over the park, and he won't. And now it's third down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns at the 40-yard line of Oakland. Eight minutes and seven seconds to play in the first half. Careful. Eddie Hendricks. Eddie Hendricks it was. He came smoking, and nobody touched him. So the Browns are taken way out of position. That's the 
that's the beautiful thing, Don, when you have a football structure that allows one man to do what he knows it's time to do. He's very familiar with all the offensive structure of, of Cleveland. When he finds a weakness, he's going to exploit it, exploit it. He doesn't have to go to the sideline to do it. John Robert L. Jackson of the Browns also has suffered a concussion. He's on the sideline. So two Browns have gone out with head injuries in this game because even with a helmet on, when you hit the playing field here, you're hitting a rock hard concrete surface. It was grass. Kick downfield, a good punt. Hops out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. Keith Moody again watched it. Johnny Evans hitting the punt for the Cleveland Browns. We're changing our viewpoints a little, Don. We're calling those 26 yarders good, and they do look good. <laughs> they right. It was a 24 yard punt. <laughs> But it's been that kind of a day and will continue to be when we come back to Cleveland. Tom Flores and Sam Bogosian would rather be in Oakland, but they're glad to be here in the playoffs. Flores. You don't have your druthers when you get here. You just suck it up and go. First down and 10 Raiders. No score on the board with seven and a half minutes to go. And again, the Raiders go nowhere on the run. Mark Van Egan got the call. Cleveland's got them playing the game they want them to play. They've got them running the ball on first down. When you do that, Cleveland will stuff you. <clears throat> they haven't been effective throwing the ball. They've only picked up one first down in the entire first half. When you get out zero to zero, when you picked up one first down, you're very lucky. I hope that guy with the foot on doesn't get his number called to go into the game and take him about five minutes to get out all that stuff. Plunkett swings it out. Van Egan has the ball. Across the 30, the Browns really come up and strike. Charlie Hall and Bill Power on a second down and eight play make the knockdown to 31. You notice when they've thrown the ball off to their backs, they have had a little room to run after they catch it because when you drop into your secondary drop, you can't get good footing, so you can't get up on Van Egan swiftly. He gets the ball and he's got a chance diddle and daddle make four, five, six, seven yards. They haven't made many first downs, only one as we mentioned earlier. And I think if they're going to be effective, they're going to have to start throwing the ball to their backs. Let's see what they go to now. It's third down and three for Oakland. No score on the board. 6.23 left to play in the first half. Plunkett takes a look. In the flat, he's intercepted. This will go for a touchdown. The ball is picked off by Ron Bolton. And into the end zone he goes. His second interception of the day. And the defense comes up with the first score of this football game. Ron Bolton with his second interception in the flat. They were going to Bob Chandler. Bolton took it, had a clear track into the end zone. The kind of throw you really want to stay away from. The sideline throw when you've got a man like Bolton who was just standing back there biding his time. It looked as if Chandler was the man to go to. He did not come out of his pattern well. As a result, it's six points for Cleveland. Bucket goes back to throw the ball. He's trying to look off the secondary. As he comes out, there's no... no Defensive linebacker in the area, but he didn't see Bolton. Bolton was standing waiting the whole time. As soon as that ball was delivered, watch Chandler come out. He kind of comes out and rolls into his pattern. Most of his patterns are crisp. He doesn't see Bolton coming right from behind him, or he'd have been in the way of the ball. Can't get it over for the extra point, though. Still six to nothing. Boy, it's really been affected on the placements. Don Cockcroft with two missed field goals, and now a missed extra point just didn't get up in the air. The return by Ron Bolton was for 42 yards on the first score of this game. So with 6-10 to go in the first half, the Browns have cut off the schneid. The first score of the game is up. And it comes from a defensive player, Ron Bolton of the Cleveland Browns. All right. Don, you know, in looking back, Bob Chandler's plus point is how well he runs his patterns. Not his speed, but if you don't get on him, he'll run your pat his patterns and beat you to death. Today is a very difficult day to run any kind of pattern. You noticed he came out of it and he slid down the line. It, it enabled Bolton to run right in front of him, pick the ball off the six. Let's watch the kickoff now. It's been so difficult to kick the ball. You saw the extra point didn't go anywhere. Cockcroft gets that ball in the air. It is taken down at the 18-yard line. Arthur Whittington turns wide. A lot of people in front of him. Ricky Feature missed him, but slowed him up, and finally the knockdown is made at about the 36-yard line. So the Raiders go back on offense first and 10. 5.58 to play in the first half. Here's the touchdown again. Plunk goes back. Sometimes you're trying to take something that you just can't handle. That kind of mistake dictates the outcome of playoff games. As we've looked throughout the league over the first four or five playoff games, it's been mistakes more than offensive execution that's dictated the outcome. 
Sam Rotigliano and Jim Plunkett are old friends. Rotigliano is the offensive coordinator at New England back in 71 when Plunkett came there as the number one pick in the NFL. He says of Plunkett, it's been a career of trauma, but finally he's getting what he deserves and playing with a good team and getting a chance. Plunkett's going to run. Throws on the run. Oh. Way too much on it. The branch was downfield. But a Brown, Clay Matthews, ended up nearest it. So did Dick Ambrose come close to getting the ball. Still nope. trying to go downfield, Don. When you try to go downfield, your quarterback has to wait for his receiver to get open. Cleveland has done very well. They've played it smartly. They're playing a deep zone. They're trying to make Oakland execute inside the, inside the seams, and they haven't been able to do it. We're told from the sideline, John, that it was Ted Hendricks who got a piece of the extra point attempt by Cockrub. It wasn't going very high. I'm not sure it would have gone <laughs> in anyway. Plunkett is 3 for 12, throwing the ball for 21 yards. He's been intercepted twice. Look at Bob Chandler. Did he now get there the ball? There is the reception. We're talking about Al Davis saying Chandler's a cold-weather catcher, and that was the superior play by Bob Chandler. He can catch a ball in a swimming pool. He, he's just a, he's just a great receiver that is really hampered because of the conditions today. Plunkett throws the ball in between the seams. We mentioned he wasn't having much success doing that. Had some success on that occasion, and Chandler made a great catch. All those seasons in Buffalo helped Bob Chandler. He played nine years there, a former captain of Southern California. He caught 10 for touchdowns this year for Oakland. Caught 49 balls in the regular season. Swing pass to Kenny King. First down, King turns wide and gets down to the 45-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Clay Matthews ran him out of bounds. I know that Oakland doesn't like to take those little dink-off patterns because it just isn't in, in the the way they like to run the ball up and down the field. They like to go down the field and challenge the defense. But today, they're going to find a few linebackers falling down, and they're going to pick up some long yards if they'll continue to do it. You'll notice every time they've come off, they've completed the ball, and they've picked up four, five, six, or seven. There's no need to try anything else until, they, until they're stopped. Well, that's probably what Plunkett then will continue to do. Get the underneath short pass. The Browns gave up a lot of yards to that this season. They take away the long pass. Plunkett stands in, has time, throws the ball, and it's caught for a first down. Again, they go underneath the zone coverage down to the 39-yard line. Hit your backs, baby. I think he's got a first down, but they may rule it a foot short. See where they spot the ball down. Could be short. That Raiders thought they had it. Their sideline is protesting. Mark Van Egan, the receiver, ball down just inside the 40. So it's going to be third down and less than a yard. Game clock, five minutes to play in the first half. Cleveland Browns lead 6-0 on a 42-yard a interception return by Ron Bolton, who's intercepted two today for Cleveland. Now it's up to their offensive line. They haven't been able to get much surge so far in the ball game. They've got to get them a foot. You look through these stands, it appears the no-shows are non-existent. Everybody's here. Over 80,000. Good play by Jim Plunkett. Picks up in the backfield. His running backs never did get a clean slate at the ball. He took it, jumped over the center for a first down. That's their third one of the ball game, second on this drive. It's tough. Look, you can see, he just couldn't get a clean handoff. Found a hole and took it. Jim Plunkett dives for the first down, down to the 38-yard line of Cleveland. Van Egan could not get his footing, was into the hole late. Wind chill just before game time measured at minus 37 degrees here at Cleveland. Minus 37. Draw play. Kenny King running hard, takes the ball down to the 31-yard line. Plunkett and the Raiders starting to move now. Jim Plunkett's had his problems with two interceptions. You'll recall he also fumbled the ball. This is not the kind of day where you challenge defenses. You take what they give you and you make them react to, to what you've taken. They've done that on this drive and they've been effective. You, you remember they've hit two backs. Chandler makes a great catch and now Kenny King gets a little run, room to run a draw. You think the offense has an advantage on the slippery field? Sometimes. Not so far today. Down to the 29-yard line on second down and three. Lyle Alzado made the play, so did Clay Matthews. Alzado's been a great leader, number 77 of these Cleveland Browns. He came in here, of course, from Denver. He's known Sam Rotigliano for a long time. They're both from Brooklyn. He said, Rotigliano said to him, Lyle, you know I love you. Just give me whatever you have left. You know what he's brought? He's brought the composure of a guy who's been in a championship game. His whole personality is geared toward getting all of it, folks. You know, let's not just get a piece, let's get it all. We're as good as anybody else. And I think that's brought a lot of the younger players up to the level they're playing today. 
Third down and just over a yard now for the Oakland Raiders. Back to the run, and now the Raiders start to crack it. Trap blocking up the middle, and the fullback Van Egan takes it down to the 25-yard line. And this has been a beautiful drive. They were totally inept in the first quarter and a half. They got the ball with five and a half minutes to play. They've, in three minutes, they've run off three first downs. They've done things a whole lot more creatively, and they haven't tried to pick on them down the field. They're taking what they've been given. San Rotigliano went to the same high school in Brooklyn as Al Davis, the man who runs the Raiders did, Erasmus Hall. He said, Sam says, Al was a little bit ahead of me in a lot of ways. Huh. I'm not sure of that. First down and 10 now for Oakland. They trail 6-0. Plunkett stands in. Throws. It comes up on the one hop. Linton Burrell was the closest to it. And the game clock is stopped with 1.57 left to play in the first half. They have doubled Cliff Branch all day long. That's why they have not been able to get to him. Unless they change, they won't be able to. 1.57 left to play in the first half with the Raiders with the ball trailing 6-0. The preceding announcement was furnished by the National Football League. Don Cricky with John Brody. Mike Adamley also here with us at Cleveland Stadium. 1.57 left to play in this AFC Divisional Playoff game. Left to play in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll be going to New York to Bryant Gumbel. An update on the playoff activity as it's been so far. San Diego Chargers a victor yesterday. And they'll be the host team next week for the AFC Championship game on NBC next Sunday. The winner of this game goes to San Diego. It's second down and 10. Hand off. King bounces off. Tries to run wide, and the Browns have it in. Clay Matthews finally caught him and knocked him down. A former number one draft choice of the Browns out of Southern California. Third year linebacker. Browns have good linebacking. So do the Raiders. And boy, they've got everything going for him today, Don, because when a, when a man breaks a tackle at the point of attack and he starts going laterally, any sort of pursuit is going to catch him because he can't turn up. He can't get any strength going forward for himself. He can't get his shoulders going forward. He can't get his foot in any kind of placement to take on a linebacker. He's at the total mercy of the linebacker. And now it's third down and 13 for Oakland. Branch and Chandler are both wide right. Here's Kenny King coming in motion to the near side. Plunkett stands in. They're giving him more time now. Raymond's caught. Raymond Chester down to the two-yard line, so the Oakland Raiders are now point-blank range. First and goal from the two. Don, that was an absolutely perfect throw by Plunkett. He was in a situation where he had Kenny King in motion out to the other side. Three men on one against Chester. He put the ball where it had to be thrown at a perfect time. Chester cradled it with his body. Comes down with a first down inside the five. This drive has been vintage. They are doing things that they're not accustomed to doing. That's the first time that, they, that they've run a play that's within keeping of their personality. It was effective, great execution. That was their biggest play of this game, a 26-yard gain on the throw from Plunkett to Raymond Chester down to the two-yard line. It's about just outside the two. Don, we've got a minute and three seconds remaining in the half. The Raiders still have a couple timeouts. There really is no problem. They can, they can take all four downs to score it. That, that ball being just inside the three is a little misleading. They may not be able to get that thing in there at running the ball from, uh, from the line of scrimmage. So now the Browns leading 6-0 back to their end zone. The Raiders come out with one of the biggest, toughest forward walls in football. Lining up to power the ball at Cleveland and try to tie the game. End up. Fumble! Free ball! The Raiders recover. Boy, that's a break. Van Egan took first. He slipped when they were trying to hand the ball off to him. It's absolutely frozen solid down there inside the five-yard line. He couldn't get a grab on the ball when he got it because he came out having slipped to start off. You see, he got a late start, never gets the ball in his grasp. When he does, it bounces right up to him. That is really a tough area of the field, John. That's right. That's ice down there. To fumble the ball a yard and a half forward pick and recover it yourself, that's a gift, folks. It's bouncing just right. Plunk it. Has a problem. Throws it away in the end zone. Derek Ramsey was somewhere near the ball, but a blitz was coming. That's a good play by Clarence Scott, Don. Don Goody coming on the blitz. Number 50. Yeah, Clarence Scott had the coverage on it. Well, it was a little delay pattern, and actually Derek Ramsey would have been wide open. Plunkett could have taken something off the ball and had him run right under it. Scott was alert. 
Over the years, the Raiders have pretty much dominated the Browns in seven previous meetings. The Raiders have won six, including one last year at Oakland in the regular season. Oakland beat Cleveland 19 to 14. Don, anybody getting an opportunity to get out of this ball game with a victory and avoiding frostbite would look awful forward to going out into that 70 degree temperature. I tell you, these fans are playing hurt too. That's going to be tough in there. <laughs> I tell you, there aren't many empty seats though. Virtually none. Over 80,000. Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Stadium. What a history this place has. Great, great teams over the years. Places rock to the cheers of 80,000 Cleveland fans so many Sundays. Third down and two, I'm sure. Oakland has discussed whether to go for two plays or one. Van Egan takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Oakland Raiders, and the football game is tied with 18 seconds to play in the first half. Great movement, Don, by Mickey Marvin and Henry Lawrence. Those two guys moved, moved the defense of the Browns a yard, yard and a half back, and that's the only way you're going to gain any yardage today. Get your offensive linemen to do their job because nobody can bowl anybody over. Excellent play. Number 70, number 65. Get the defenders on the ground, allow the back to go over the top. So now Chris Barr comes out. He had an excellent playoff game against Houston. Chris Barr, three for three in extra points, two for two in field goals in his first playoff game ever last week. I think it'll be a little easier for a sideline to get the ball up in this weather. We'll see. Might break his foot, but I think he can get it up. Bob Chandler holds. The extra point is up and right down the middle. So Chris Barr delivers, and it is now an Oakland Raider lead, seven to six, with 18 seconds left to play in the first half. Don, give credit to Jim Plunkett. That was a beautifully conceived drive. He did things in very difficult conditions, threw the ball where it had to be thrown. Chandler came down with one great catch, but he put the ball around the infield, threw it to the areas that were open. As a result, put on about a 65-yard drive, and they got a touchdown right after an interception. That's, that's the change in Jim Plunkett. You know, earlier he used to get his dauber down a little bit, wouldn't come right back. Winning 10 out of 12 games that he's played in the latter part of the season this year, I think has really given him a lot of confidence, and the Raiders have a lot in him. They do. He came in as a free agent, 78. 64-yard drive, and watch Bob Chandler, one of the great holders in football, set it down gingerly, and, and Barr bangs it. <laughs> that comes into play today. Doesn't it? Raiders break the tie, a 64-yard drive, 14 plays, Van Egan on the payoff end from a yard out. And the extra point by Chris Barr gives the Oakland Raiders a 7-6 lead with 18 seconds to play in the first half. Now, Charles White. The Heisman Trophy winner a year ago from Southern California. The number one draft choice of the Browns is in to return the kickoff along with Dino Hall. Hall gets the ball. Across the 20, right up the gut. He comes out to the 35-yard line on the fly. 14 seconds left to play in the half. Steve Sylvester was on the stop for the Raiders. Be very surprised, Don, if Oakland plays that man-to-man -man defense they've been playing throughout the first half now. They've got to put people back take away the opportunity for a long gainer or a penalty because you can bet Brian's going to heave it up there. Brian will be a pitch and he comes out now. He'll be going home to San Diego next week to play the Chargers if the Browns advance to that game. Win or lose, I got to believe he'll be out there. <laughs> played at San Diego State. Brian Seif. Computers aren't always right. He wasn't drafted until the 12th round. On first down, stands in, throws long. Rucker gets the ball and is out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Eight seconds left. One more pitch. They've got to get it down to the 25-yard line, Don. They've got to get about 23 yards on this next play within eight seconds. They've still got a timeout left. That would get, give Cockcroft a chance to change his luck a little bit. But anything over 40 yards, I, I relate to as utterly impossible. It has been for Cockcroft. He's really had his problems. Bar hit it. Sidewinder, no problem on the extra point. Seven to six, Oakland leads. Six seconds left in the half. As Sight throws long. Logan's going for the ball. Lester Hayes intercepted another one. The man is absolutely phenomenal. 17 interceptions he has this season. Four in the playoffs. Lester Hayes of Texas A&M. 
He's, he's playing the only way he should play at this time. He was playing 25 yards deep. They figure if we're going to have a go at it, let's try him again. See if he can come down with this one. Well, I know what I'd do with him, John. I'd put him on offense, too. Lester would be going both <laughs> ways for me today because he can catch it better than anybody out there. He does pretty well just going the way he does. Here goes Logan down the field. He, you know he's not going to get behind Hayes. A lot of fellas be con content just to bat it down, not Lester. Put another skin on the wall. So the Raiders rally back and take the lead. That's the end of the first half with the score, the Oakland Raiders 7, the Cleveland Browns 6. We're just about set for the second half of this AFC Divisional Playoff game. The Raiders and the Browns in the first half, each with six first downs. The Raiders culminating a 64-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown run by Mark Van Egan and the subsequent extra point by Chris Barr have taken the lead 7-6 to six in the game. Don, the kicking game has been a big factor. So far, the Browns have had much better field position than the Raiders. The Raiders put together one good drive throughout the entire first half. It happened late. Other than that, they were totally nullified. And I think when you look at the passing stats, they give you an indication of the conditions that exist. Although they don't get much reception-wise, they've got to go upstairs because nobody can run one another up off at the line of scrimmage. Plunkett hit 7 for 18. Brian Seip perhaps had his worst statistical day of the year, 4 for 18. However, I don't think it will have any effect on what he's going to do in the second half. The receivers are going to have to find a way to come up with the ball when it's thrown. Browns are back out on the playing field, and so are the 80,000 file back in. There is no relief from the cold. An amazing turnout, considering the weather conditions that wind chill factor announced at 37 below zero. <laughs> People talk about the fact that, well, maybe they're used to it in Cleveland. Nobody's used to 37 below. That's when everyone stays in and looks at the snowfall on the ground. And no matter what sort of, of conditions do exist, these people are going to come out and watch their Browns win from their viewpoint. And uh, if they have to tolerate the cold, the players can do it, so they're going to have a go at it also. It was a long first half, John. And it's going to be a longer second half. When you put the ball up as much as they do, and there are as many incompletions thrown as there have been and will be in the second half, it tends to lengthen the, the time of the game. These fellows will probably be out there upwards of three and a half to four hours. I don't see anybody... I, I, don't, I just don't see, it looks as if the ground is a little bit better than it was at the start of the game. I'm not sure that's so, but in the middle of the field, if they can find any footing at all, you'll see the ball start to go in the middle of it. Well, the Raiders got their stuff together. They didn't run at all with any success early in the game, and then they started to move out better, and Plunkett started to throw some big strikes. He had a disastrous first half, but as he's done all season long, he's rallied the Raiders back. Don, what you see, you know, we talk about the footing of the receivers. We talk about a lot of things. What, the, what isn't automatic anymore in these conditions is the snap between quarterback and center. What isn't automatic is the guard and the tackle being able to, to coordinate some movement-wise, and the defense can just stand you straight up. You can't do anything with their footing. If your feet don't work and don't get under you and you don't have any, any momentum with them, then you just can't move anywhere. That, that's what? One guy, John, who's enjoying this like a day at the beach, though, is Lester Hayes. How come he doesn't have any problems? That's a, that's a question. I'll tell you what, and I, I don't have an answer. I do know this. He's been in a position on both interceptions where he's been back waiting on the ball. He is wearing gloves, but everybody's wearing gloves. He's the only man in the game outside of one catch by Chandler who's caught the ball with his arms at the proper extension at the height of its arc. And uh, primarily the receivers have tried to catch the ball in their body. It's bounced off it like a brick wall. Uh, so I don't have an answer for that. The man's having a year that uh, maybe he doesn't know it's cold down there. Might not. Lester Hayes with a couple of more interceptions today. He had two last week. 17 for the year. The Cleveland Browns and the Oakland Raiders both were long shot the way this season started out. Both lost three of their first five games and then got it together and rallied back. And now the Raiders coming in with a record of 12 and 5 on the year. The wild card team from the AFC West. The winner of this game will, of course, go to San Diego to play the Chargers next Sunday. 4.30 start time on NBC, the American Conference title game. You know, I really thought that the Browns had a big edge coming into the ball game when the conditions were the way they were. Number one, personality-wise, Oakland likes to attack the defense. You can't do that today. Number two, Brian Seip has five receivers who have caught 50 or more balls. He's thrown the ball around the infield all year long. He's been the kind of fellow that can take advantage of a weakness. However, because Oakland has played man-to-man -man defense, it has necessitated him going down the field one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get a receiver free. So far, he's been unable to do so. 
But if they play the same defense, you can bet he's just going to keep peppering. Well, we're going to find out right now because the Browns are out and so are the Oakland Raiders. We're ready now for the opening kickoff of the third quarter. See the numbers of the quarterbacks. Brian Seip only 4 of 18. This is 61% plus thrower throughout the regular season. They gave him some extra time in the locker room at halftime because of the cold weather. I'm not sure that's good. <laughs> Do you get warm in 15 minutes? Not from this you don't. Charles White and Dino Hall will be kickoff return man now for the Cleveland Browns. Chris Power hit that very big extra point after Van Egan's one yard touchdown plunge. To give the Raiders the one point lead has the ball teed up ready to kick it off now to open the third quarter. Powers into it and here is Charles White at the 20, 25. And all the way out to the 39-yard line, There's Charles White. A 1979 Heisman Trophy winner from Southern California, Todd Christensen, made the stop for the Oakland Raiders. 14.52 left to play in the third quarter now as we're ready to go at the first play from scrimmage. Oakland Raiders across their defensive front have John Matuzak at one end. Reggie Kinlaw is the middle guard, Dave Browning the right end. Hendricks, Millen, Nelson, and Rod Martin back to line. Lester Hayes and Dwayne Osteen at the corners. Mike Davis and Burgess Owens are the safeties. Brian Seif setting up to throw in first down. Takes a look. Guns the ball down low. Did he get the ball? I think it was a one bouncer. They may give it to him, but it looked like a one bouncer from here. Ozzie Newsom is being credited with the reception of the Raiders. That's, that's a good break. You see Ozzie Newsom, who they've been trying to get to in the first half without any success, now gets in between the linebackers. You see the problem he's having coming into his pattern. Did that hit the ground or did it hit his hands? We know it bounced into his chest, but he might have had his hands underneath. First and ten. Mike Pruitt gets the call. Takes it down to the 47-yard line. All right, we've noticed that Brian Sipes had excellent time throwing the ball, but when they want to run the ball, the defense has all the best of it. John Matusik's been in there plugging up the holes all the way. You can see they both come to a standstill. When neither team, when neither guy gets good footing, everybody comes together, looks like a jump center, and the back runs into the pile. Talking to Earl Leggett, the defensive line coach of the Raiders, great player of the Chicago Bears. He said Matusik's like one of the old Bears, like George Hallis liked the real big plenty mean. He's found a home in Oakland. He's having a Pro Bowl year. John Matuzak came as a free agent, even though he was the number one player drafted in the NFL. Running with the ball is Kelvin Hill. And Kelvin's not done yet as he goes down the sideline and takes it inside the 30-yard line. They mark him out of bounds at the 28. This is just super offensive surge. We mentioned that the offensive linemen don't really get any surge. You can see John Matusik, number 72. Willie Jones. He's having a little problem. And watch, watch Hill. Now, it looks like he's free right here, but he can't keep his footing and well enough. to. There's nobody between himself and the goal line, but he can't keep his balance. A slick, slick field, but Calvin Hill treads over it for 18 yards and a Cleveland Brown first down to the 28-yard line of Oakland. Logan wide left. Rucker wide right. Elvin Hill comes out of the backfield. Brian Seip takes a look and runs with the ball, and Brian Seip comes inside the 25-yard line. Down to the 24. Matuzak at 6'8", 280, fell on him. Don't think it, don't think it doesn't smart. That's the third time that Seip is elected to go forward. You'll notice when he does start running, he doesn't run sideways. When he steps up and when he goes back to throw, he'll step up in the pocket. He will not try to get his offensive tackles to let anybody inside. First little foul, number 72 on a defense, grabbing the face mask. First down. Well, maybe we can see it. You see that paw come around the end. So now the Browns take the ball down to the 20-yard line. Not a flagrant violation, therefore only five yards. It can be up to 15 yards, depending on the severity of the infraction and the opinion of the official. Face mask. It could be 5, 10, or 15. John pointed out that one was 5. 
And now the Browns start them out a challenge in the third quarter on their first possession. Brian Seif takes a look. Throws. He's got Ozzie Newsom. And Ozzie Newsom takes the ball inside the 15-yard line and down to the 13. Oakland has continued to play a man-to-man -man defense. Now when you get inside the 20-yard line, it almost precludes them from playing any type of zone. We've seen Cleveland continue to do what they tried to do in the first half unsuccessfully. Come to Ozzie Newsom, throw the ball off to Calvin Hill. Calvin Hill, by the way, only carried the ball once in the entire National Football League season. He's carried the ball three or four times today. Second down and four for the Cleveland Browns. 13-yard line of Oakland. Pruitt, quick hitter. Didn't get much. Maybe a yard. That was all. Reggie Kinlaw, one of the quickest middle guards in pro football. Only 240 pounds, but he's so tough to block. One of the 42 Oklahoma players in the NFL. Second and five is a natural run pass situation under normal conditions. Today, my pick is it's a throwing situation. That is an interesting point, John. The strategy is completely changed. Defenses looking for a pass in a particular area. Everything goes out the window. Now you're not quite sure what anybody's going to do on offense, particularly an innovative quarterback like Brian Seitz. Third down and three now. Third and three for the Browns. Big down. Seitz is looking. Throwing to Logan. And Dwayne Osteen is right with them. They both head up into a snowbank. Good footing. The defense is all at the worst of it. Bad footing, one-on-one, -on -one, Osteen and Logan. It looks for a sure thing. It's a perfect setup for a touchdown throw. Logan could not get his footing, could not come out of his pattern, could not get close to the ball. So now it's fourth down, and Don Cockcroft will try again. You'll recall in the first half, he missed two field goal attempts and an extra point. Paul McDonald will hold. See if he can get this one up. Got it up. Don Cockcroft drills it down the middle, and the Cleveland Browns take the lead. It's 9 7 Cleveland with 11.29 left to play in the third quarter. So they've got something to cheer about once again in Cleveland, and the Browns will be kicking it off when we come back. We're back and set to go as Cockcroft hit the field goal that gave the Cleveland Browns a 9 7 lead with 11.29 left to play in the third quarter. Sam Rattigliano and his Browns. Champions of the AFC Central and in the playoffs for the first time since 1972. Cockcroft hits the ball downfield, hits it well. It's going to take a Cleveland hop. It is picked up by Arthur Whittington at the 20, 25, and the 30. And Arthur Whittington busts it right up the middle and takes the ball out to the 40. Don, I'll tell you what, the kicking game is such an instru instrumental part in, in both these clubs winning or losing. You'll notice the kicking game is really at a standstill. The ball is rock hard. They can't get it more than 35, 40 yards downfield. When they do, it gives the return team a chance to set things up. Both teams brought the kickoffs out to the 40-yard line. That gives their up. Look at this guy. Maybe he doesn't know where he is. Not cold now, baby, but try it in the morning. That's unbelievable. One of those at every ball game, aren't it? Right up the middle, line, first down. The Raiders go to the run. Van Egan takes it across the 40-yard line after the 43. Henry Bradley, the middle guard, made the knockdown. Marshall Harris, Henry Bradley, Lyle Alzado, the defensive front men for Cleveland. Charlie Hall, Robert L. Jackson, Dick Ambrose, and Clay Matthews. Some of the Browns get to the heated benches. Here's a man that doesn't very often come out of a football game. He started every ball game he's played for the Raiders. Gene Upshaw is coming off with a little bit of injury. That's a big segment in their offensive line. 205 straight games over 13 years. He's never missed a preseason game, a regular season game. He'll be back. Or a postseason game. He's the leader of the Oakland Raiders. He delivers the clubhouse speech before they take the playing field. Running with the ball is Van Egan, but the Cleveland linebacker him him in, and Dick Ambrose makes the knockdown. Robert L. Jackson out there trying to stay warm, pump up his defense. Dick Ambrose, we mentioned earlier, is the man that's generally in the right hole at the right time when you're running a draw play. This is a draw all the way. He never bites a lick, gets on Van Egan before he can get to the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Draws back. It 
doesn't take long. One play and Gene Upshaw back in the lineup for the Oakland Raiders. Plunkett throws in the flat. Oh, oh, oh. Clarence Scott who almost intercepted the ball. And so fourth down up comes up for Oakland. Dino Hall goes back for the Browns. Very important segment of plays, Don, because you recall just before the half, the Raiders ran it right down the field with the wind. They are now going against the wind. It's a little bit more difficult to operate. They couldn't come up with much. Ray Guy standing back at his 30, and Dino Hall is back at the 11-yard line of Cleveland. His concern is not how far he kicks it, but that he catches it. They got to get first things first. He catches it and he kicks it well. A high spiral. Nino Hall looks up in the sun, takes the ball and heads up field. Here's the blockers on the wall. Nino Hall rips it all the way down to the 36 yard line. Joe Campbell makes the stop for Oakland. 38 yard punt, a 16 yard return by Dino Hall. So the clock has stopped with 9.59. Left to play in the third quarter, and the Browns in the lead, 9-7. to seven. They like all this in Cleveland, and with good reason, as the Browns are in the lead, 9-7. to seven. But a long way to go, 9.59 left to play in the game. The Oakland Raiders come in with a defense that plays very well against the run with those huge linebackers like Hendricks and Millett. And on long yardage, they'll go to four down linemen and five defensive backs. Oakland people will tell you this is the best Raider defense they've ever had. Ryan Seip looks into that defense now and throws over it, going for Rucker, and he is struck. Wayne Osteen gets him as he goes out of bounds. Again, the Raiders continue to play that man-to-man -man defense. He's trying to find an open receiver. The Raiders have not changed, and I don't think they have any reason to. They've been effective making Seip throw the ball down the field. You see, he gets a one-on-one -on -one situation. Rucker on Osteen. The ball didn't get there. Greg Pruitt now goes in the offensive backfield of Cleveland. Calvin, Calvin Hill. Hill comes out. You know, Calvin Hill may not be accustomed to playing quite as much as he's played today, and they're going to have to give him periodic rest, which they did on this occasion. Second down and 10 now, coming up for the Browns from their 35. Again, Sight gets time, lost it downfield to Greg Pruitt. He catches the ball. Has the ball all the way down to the 39-yard line of Oakland. Rod Martin made the tackle, but threw it, cruised right into the secondary, took the ball, and goes down for a gain of 26 yards. All right, he got by the linebackers. Once you get by those fellas, they're trying to catch up with you. They're in excellent position to do something, but when the ball's in the air, they're trying to get their balance. Pruitt is trying to get the ball. Looks like it's a very close play, but Pruitt had it all the way. <clears throat> all the way. Greg Pruitt. Big man, 5'8", 195 pounds is what he really is. First and 10. Sipe swings it out to Kelvin Hill. Kelvin Hill did well, going to get back to the line of scrimmage with the Raider linebackers had a hand in. And notice he, he realized he, was, he had gone as far as he could. It was an outlet pass. None of the linebackers fell down, so he did, because contact can create fumbles right now. Ball position is very important. Got to hold on to the ball, and they've done it remarkably well considering the playing conditions with 8.37 left to go in the third quarter. The Cleveland Browns behind the half, 7-6, have taken the lead 9-7 on top cross field goal. Second down and 10 now for the Browns. The Browns drive on. Okay, that's the strategy. Keep firing that ball down the field. They're still in a man to man defense. Very tough on the cornerbacks. Side figures we're going to find one of you fellas open, one out of three downs, and when you do, I'll hit him. That's the way it's been going in the second half. See, he's getting no pass rush. It allows his wide receivers to get down the field, get into their routes. Just give him a crack. Browns connecting much better now at their passing game. Type is getting the time, and the 
Receivers are getting open. Here's Seif throwing to the end zone. Reggie Rucker. Seif's trying to get a call down. Seif was trying to get a call. He did. When he threw the ball, he thought there was interference. He thought there was contact about 9, 10 yards down the field. You know, we see a lot more completions right now than we did early in the ball game, Don, and primarily because even though the conditions haven't improved, the receivers are getting more accustomed to them. And when you do get accustomed to them, you know how fast you can run your patterns, you know how long it's going to take you to come out of them. And you know that ball's going to be like a brick. It's not, a, it's not optimum to be, to be catching a brick, but if you know how heavy it is, at least you've got a better chance. Cleveland Browns have allowed only 23 sacks of Brian Seif all season long. They said the primary game plan was we had to protect him because it's going to take time for the receivers to get open against the bump and run defense of the Raiders. Swing pass to Greg Pruitt. And Pruitt's inside the 20. Well short of a first down. On a second and 10 play, he got about five. You know what's helped right now is Seif has pretty good footing. The rest of the fellas are having a little trouble. As a result, he's getting good time. He's getting a lot of momentum on his ball. Put it out there in the flat to Greg Pruitt. Mike Davis is in a very difficult assignment. He's got somebody one-on-one -on -one all day long. Your strong safeties are generally the fellas that are real good force men and good tacklers. And uh, coverage is secondary. Over 80,000 packing Cleveland Stadium as the Browns now come up third down and five. They lead the game 9-7. The blitz. Browning was coming on the run, and Brian Seif got rid of it. Well, that, that was a great play by Rod Martin. That was a little cooler play. They were waiting for the proper situation. Seif was going to roll left. Browning forced him into making a move before he wanted to, and Rod Martin was all over Calvin Hill down the right sideline. Don Cockcroft finally connected the last time he tried a field goal. It was a 30-yarder. Now he'll be hitting one from about 36 yards away. This is a long one. It's a real long one in these conditions. That is very true. The sun is shining brightly now at one end of the field, the open end. Fake. I think McDonald might have had a problem holding the ball. That's why he tried to do what he did with it. Now the Raiders will take it over at their 28-yard line. Good break for Oakland. Look, you can see he never got a good handle on the ball. Cockroft comes up late. This is not a design play. This is an automatic. It's like an audible. When you see something like this happen, it was, it was not a good hand back. You just try to make the best out of a bad situation. At home, someone might think, this is no time for a fake field goal. But you can see McDonald trying to get control of the ball. Against his leg, it was, a rel it was a relatively bad snap. He didn't get full control of it. This is an audible that happens whenever things go bad. You can see Cockroft tried to help out where he could. All to no avail. Raiders first and 10 on their own 28. If he kept it there and Cockroft kicked it, it would have been blocked then and probably knocked way back downfield. You bet. And first down and 10, Plunkett takes a look and he throws and kicks. The connection out to the 33-yard line. Cliff Branch, first reception of the day, Don. They've still they've been double-teaming him. That time he cut underneath. That's the kind of pattern when your wide receivers do get balls. That's the kind of patterns I think they ought to run more of. Clean people out. Run your wide receivers back underneath. See if you can't get them on the dead run. Very rare that a field goal or placement holder, John, where it's gloves, but Paul McDonald's doing it today. You got it. Second down and six now for the Oakland Raiders. They're down in this game, 9-7. They go to the run and there's nothing there. Kenny King worked his way into that big defensive run of the Browns, but there was nothing for him there. And so with 5.38 to play on the clock running in the third quarter, the Raiders re-huddle. Third down coming up, third and two. You know what's impressive to me is the way that the communication between quarterback and running back has not produced more fumbles than it has. Quarterbacks seem to have pretty good hold of the ball. Not predictable. Third down and four for the Raiders. Plunkett looking long. Throws hard, makes the connection, but Raymond Chester coming back at the football. Might have not gotten the first down yardage. He had it where he caught it, but he came back. 
This one depends on the spot. They did not give it to him where he caught the ball. They gave it to him where they deemed his forward progress stop. He was trying to get away from the linebacker cutting underneath. Charlie Hall had none of it, brought him down after about a three-yard gain. It looks like we've got another penalty, too. There is a penalty down to where the offensive backfield of the Raiders aligned, and the ball is set back to the 24. Here's Ben Bryant. Number 63. Got Upshaw holding the left guard. Art Shell and Gene Upshaw are going against a longtime adversary when he was with Denver, Lyle Alzado. Don, I agree with the call. It would have been fourth down and one yard to go. They'd rather have it third down and 14. It forces Oakland to throw the ball if they're trying to get a first down. Anything good could happen for either side. Third down and 15. Plunkett throwing long. Bob Chandler goes for the ball, but there's too much on it. And the Raiders will have to punt it back to Cleveland. Ron Bolton, Clarence Scott were on the coverage. But Chandler had room had the ball come down in his area. Yeah, that's that's easy to say. But from where Plunkett was throwing it, he really didn't have him as open as it appeared he was. When, when Chandler comes out of his pattern, it looks like he could have put the ball over the top and hit him. But Ron Bolton, number 28, is standing right in front of him where there was very little room to throw it. Ron Bolton has two interceptions today already, one for a touchdown. Cleveland's only touchdown of the game. He ran it back some 42 yards. Dino Hall is back now for punt return for Cleveland. You'll notice everyone has a little different combination. Guys wearing one glove on, one glove off. Hits the ball downfield. Dino Hall has been a sure-handed guy catching these punts. Turns to the outside. He's been a good returner. Dino Hall's in open field for a moment. He shot across midfield and came inside the 45-yard line of Oakland. Down to the 44. Ray Guy kept that one from going all the way, pal. That's right. He came in and got him himself. Well, you can see as it opens up how all the all the special team fellas are having so much trouble with their footing that if you get a lot of wall form, the guy's liable to go on forever. Guy makes the final play. They've got the ball with good field position. The Oakland Raiders trailing the Cleveland Browns 9-7. to Power 45 left to play in the third quarter. As wide to the left comes Dave Logan, and wide to the right goes Reggie Rucker for Cleveland. The Browns with a two-point lead, 4.45 to play third quarter. First down for Cleveland. Brian Seif throws over the middle. He's got Dave Logan open, and Logan has the ball inside the 25-yard line. And down to the 23. And you can just see it at the line of scrimmage sometimes. When Seif was calling an audible, he called it because he was one-on-one -on -one with Osteen again. He heard Seif coming to the audible. He was leaning over, specifically interested in hearing what he was saying. It's a pattern one-on-one. -on -one. He's got all the time in the world to develop his pattern. When he does so, Seif throws it well. I mean, both those cornerbacks are under an awful lot of pressure. 22-yard gain on the play. We mentioned how much time they have. You take a look at this offensive line. They're holding their ground. De Leon's trying to look for somebody to help out with. Joe D blocking well. Back to live action now. Seif time again. Now it ends. And Seif doing very well to get rid of the ball before they got him. You bet. I'll tell you why it wasn't called intentional grounding. It's because the official, Ben Drive, was trying to protect Brian Seif. He saw Matusik had a hold of him. He wanted to see if anything went on. So he really didn't see the ball go down the field. Since he didn't see it, you don't call it. There's the defensive coordinator for Cleveland, Marty Schottenheimer. Brian Seip is 31 years old, 6'1", 195 pounds from San Diego State. Here come the pass rushers, Cedric Hardman, Willie Jones. Yep, the pass rushers are in for Oakland. Cedric Hardman, number 86, set to the right. Willie Jones, set to the left. Second down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. See if he goes to the draw play. Seip throws. Almost intercepted. Look out! Penalty markers come in. Three of them. Osteen knew he was in a problem. He was trying to get over to Logan before the ball got there. He didn't know that Seif was having a problem. He was trying to catch up with his man. The ball never got in the area, but he was all over the top of Logan. It'll give the Browns a first and goal just inside their 10-yard line. You know what's so tough from an Oakland standpoint is they've got... They've, they've hit opposing quarterback something like 54 or 55 times throughout the year. And they have with a great pass rush that has come right up the middle, which allows those two outside pass rushers to get to the quarterback. Well, today, the two fellas up the middle, Matusik, 
Kinlaw, Browning. These fellas can't get enough penetration to force Sight into Football a problem. Side, decline a penalty. Also, defense pass interference. Accept it. First down. Very gracefully accepted. All right. We mentioned Osteen doesn't know where the ball is. He's trying to get to Logan any way he can. He knows he's in a hurry-up situation. Trying to get to the ball. That's interference, folks. That was well illustrated on the replay. Our producer today for NBC, George Finkel, our director, Ken Fouts, as the Cleveland Browns have the ball first in goal. 10-yard line. Browns leading 9-7. Here's Greg Pruitt to the outside. He eluded Ken Hendricks, then went out of bounds. Then about the eight. He eluded Hendricks, Donnie, but say they made the play because Hendricks forced him wide. Mike Davis finally ran him out. Third quarter clock. 3.40 to play in it. Oakland led at halftime 7-6. to six. This is a big drive as far as Cleveland's concerned. They've had the best of it throughout the ball game except for one drive that Oakland put together. If they don't score here, they've still kept Oakland within a touchdown. Now, momentum has a way of shifting throughout the course of an afternoon. They've got the wind at their backs right now. They've got to capitalize. Right now, they have it second and goal at the 8-yard line. Almost the seven. Rutgers man to man again out here on the corner. Fumble. A fumble it was. And Brian Seip will dive into that buzzsaw every time looking for the loose ball. Might have come back up with it. But he didn't. Joe DeLamalier did. I think Seip did get it because he had pretty good footing when he lost it. You'll see he just got the ball touched. It looked like Hendricks was going backwards, touched him with his long arm. Seip did a great job he to get sure to it did. along with Delama Lore. A lot of contact in that area. A lot of those deals with a separated shoulder very easily. There's the array of footwear. They've been trying everything impossible on a frozen field here in Cleveland. Whatever they're working with now, it's going a lot better because people are running their routes well. And Brian Seip and the Cleveland Browns now have a third down and goal from the 12-yard line. Seip looks, he throws. Logan had it and lost it. Double team coverage on Dave Logan, Burgess Owen, the free safety, and Dwayne Osteen. Burgess Owens has had his work full, too. He's trying to cover the middle. When you're a free safety without any footing, we see Logan beats Osteen inside, okay? Osteen's trying to recover. That's Burgess Owens who's slipping and sliding all over in the end zone. That could have been a touchdown except for pretty good recovery. That's ice down at that end. And that's what they fell on and hard. We've had two players go into the locker room with concussions because of the fall when they hit the ground. It looks like that's what happened to Osteen on that play. Don Cockcroft. See what he was like in the regular season. No problem for the most part between 30 and 39 yards, but there's been one today. He does have a 30-yarder to his credit. It's been the difference in this game as the Cleveland Browns have come from behind. And they lead it 9-7. to seven. And the winner of this game, of course, will go to San Diego next Sunday to play the San Diego Chargers in the American Football Conference Championship game. Start time on NBC is at 4.30 with NFL 80. Dwayne Osteen goes off to the playing field. The Raider Pest secondary really improved when Dwayne Osteen took the starter job from Monty Jackson. Osteen is a third-year player from San Jose State. Cockcroft setting up for another 30-yard drive. They recall the last attempt. The hole didn't work. Paul McDonald had a run with the ball. Got it up. Got it through. And the Browns extend their lead to 12 to 7. Very good hole, I'll tell you. We saw McDonald come in with two gloves. Some are playing with one. He gets total control of the ball. We'd say, hey, Anybody can suck it up and play without gloves. If you're only in once in a while, he feels he's got a better edge wearing them. It went through 12-7. Sam Rotigliano's Cleveland Browns have opened up a 12-7 lead after they trailed by a point at the half 7-6. We have a long way to go, though. 2.40 left to play in the third quarter. As the Cleveland Browns had the ball teed up, Don Cockcroft now have two 30-yard field goals in this game and back deep to receive his kickoff. Keith not, Moody and Arthur Whittington. And not too deep. No, <laughs> I'll tell you. They've been, get, they've been getting that ball out to the 40, and that's when, when things haven't broken. If they break, they could go a long way. A 
Nice spinning kick, not too deep. Keith Moody to the 25-yard line, to the 30, and Keith Moody comes out to the 34-yard line. There, the Raiders will go on offense, first and 10. McDonald Oden came down to make the play in special teams for Cleveland. Let's keep in mind, Don, the Browns have really controlled the football offensively as far as this game's gone. It's still leaving the Raiders within five points. In three minutes, a little, little less than three minutes, as we're getting down to the end of the third quarter, they reverse ends, and the wind is going with the offense. Less than 2,000 no-shows at today's game. Jim Plunkett takes a look. Throws, and it's almost taken in by Cliff Branch coming back at the ball, but he lost it. Branch is, was running the deep patterns earlier. Now he's been going out 20 yards a lot of times and coming back at the ball. Sure, he ran deep, and then he came back at the ball, Don, but it's so hard to run that type of pattern. You see Ambrose is getting way back in the area. Branch is trying to come all the way back to make a fine reception for an eight-yard gain. But remember, when Ambrose is that deep, you just lay it off to a back. He can pick up the same yardage. Jim Plunkett has thrown 22 times. He's completed eight for 75 yards. And intercepted twice, and he fumbled once, dropping the pass. Kenny King was way downfield for the Oakland Raiders. Clinton Burrell was the closest to the ball when it came in on the one half. And so the third quarter clock now is stopped with 2.14 to play. And the Browns in the lead 12-7. Last time they played, last December, December of 79, a year ago December. Oakland won that game 19-14. Tom Flores has two Super Bowl rings. He got one as a backup quarterback with Kansas City in Super Bowl IV and also an assistant coach with the Raiders when they won it in 76. And it may not be this year, but down the line he'll have one in Oakland. <laughs> Third down and 10 now for Plunkett and the Raiders. Big rush. Plunkett stands in. Goes out of the pocket. He didn't like to run with three knee operations behind him, but he did well. Got ahead across the 40-yard line, but was short of a first down. By about three, Charlie Hall ran him out. Okay, Jim, Jim Plunkett is excellent moving around back in the pocket. I think that's what he does about as well as anybody. When he want run is in back here, he's trying to find a, a little bit of time so that he can fire the ball down the field. Now, he comes up. He makes his move out to the side. When he stutters here, he's given himself, he's given no edge to himself. He had a chance to pick it up. He comes out about a yard short, and Oakland's going to punt it on fourth down. Dino Hall has done a big job running the ball back. Jim Plunkett, the college player of the year in 1970, when he won the Heisman Trophy, the Maxwell Award, quarterback Stanford to the upset of Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, was the number one player drafted in the league by New England, and threw 19 touchdown passes as a rookie and a series of injuries in a series of new teams after the trade to San Francisco. Ray Guy steps into the ball and hits it hard. Dino Hall loses the handle, picks it up, and gets to the 23. Dino Hall has been a very effective Cleveland player today, returning punts. Now the Browns come out with 153 to play in the third quarter. That's a heated bench. These were hauled in from Philadelphia. The Eagles were using them yesterday. And Still they, not warm enough. No. No empty spaces on that hot bench, so either side. Those seats are to premium. Handoff goes up the middle. Ball taken to the 26-yard line by Mike Pruitt. And a marker is down. There's been very few of those, really, though, John. Well, that was obvious. That was motion on the ball carry. He got started just a little bit before the snap of the ball. I'm amazed that there have been as few penalties as there, as there have been called, Don, because you can do anything wrong and not even know why out here today. Mike Pruitt caught standing on start and rocking on go with 144 left to play in the third quarter. A penalty is assessed against the Cleveland Browns. The ball is set back to the 21-yard line. The Browns were the most penalized team in the NFL. 33 huh? on the offense. That is the first penalty of this day on Cleveland, though. Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt are the offensive backs for Cleveland. There you go, John. <laughs> it's awful nice. I think Sipes the guy. Sipes has been the guy this year and this day so far for Cleveland. Browns leading the game 9-7. to seven. Greg Pruitt 
turns the corner, gets out of bounds across the 25-yard line. 12 to 7 for that last 30-yard field goal. 139 left to play. Browns down at the half, 7 to 6. They initially took the lead 6-0 on a 42-yard interception return by Ron Bolton. And then the Raiders drove 64 yards. Van Egan on the payoff end. And the extra point was good, 7-6. Then the Cleveland Browns and a pair of 30-yard field goals in the second half by Don Cockcroft have opened up a 12-7 lead. But a long way to go on this one. All right, we've got feature out here on the wide side again, man-to-man -man with Osteen. Burgess Owens tries to help some, but I think it's a blitz. Hardman's in, so's Willie Jones. The pass rushers pinching from the corner. They go to the power sweep, and Greg Pruitt comes across the 25-yard line on second down and nine. Got about three. Mike Pruitt led the blocking. It was a blitz down, and you couldn't have a worse run called against a blitz situation. <laughs> You've got everybody up at the line of scrimmage. They're stretching everything out wide. There's no holes open up. You can see they picked up two or three yards. All out now to the 28-yard line. Third down and five coming up for Cleveland. Big tackle there, blocking. Doug Deacon didn't know that he was had the ball right behind him, was kicking it. If he spends any time looking around for that ball, is the man on defense will find it and get to it before he does. Mike Davis sees the ball but can't get to it because he can't get through Deacon's leg to get a piece of the ball. Sipe finally comes up with it, and that was just a heads-up play to save a turnover. As I mentioned, it's not even easy passing the ball from center to quarterback. That's the third bobble all on the Cleveland side. And that certainly illustrated how difficult it is as the Browns do very well to get it back, but now they'll be punting and the Raiders can come out of this with very good field position. Johnny Evans standing and hitting the ball at his nine. Gets an end over end punt downfield, but it takes a big, big roll. Look at this roll all the way down inside the 25 yard line. And it's not done yet. And the Browns will let it roll all the way down to the 20. Okay, we discussed the importance of the kicking game. Just a, miss, yards. just a misplay of a short kick, which would have given them the ball somewhere around the original line of scrimmage, the 30, 35 yard line, their own. Gets them back to their own 20. That's a 45 yard miscue. He couldn't make the play. He was a little bit too deep on the punt. Went end over end. Cleveland got a break, and they forced Oakland into a hole. 61 yards, the longest punt of the year, with three seconds left to play in the third quarter. So the Raiders come out the ball right at their 20. When it looked like they get good field position, they now are 80 yards in the Cleveland end zone. Dave Dalby gives the snap to Plunkett, who looks and throws to Kenny King. Going outside, Clay Matthews gets him. You don't go wide in these Browns, they're not very often. Their linebackers can run. It's about the only way you can go wide, though, Don, is throw a little quick screen, throw something to get the ball in a pass play to, your, to one of your backs. Hope he can find a hole as we end the third quarter. The score is Cleveland 12, Oakland 7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. <laughs> Nothing moving on the waterfront of Lake Erie today. But there's plenty going on in one of the famed ball yards in the National Football League, Cleveland Stadium. The chill factor, 30 degrees below zero. This is Don Cricky with John Brody as we're ready now for the start of the fourth quarter. Jim Plunkett, the Raiders, with a long way to go. They have second down and 11 from their 19-yard line, and Cleveland is in the lead, 12-7. Hand off to Kenny King. Fighting and working hard, Kenny King comes across the 25-yard line to the 26. Hey, a group you all of us are very proud of is the technical crew here from NBC. You think it's tough to play football in this? That was Ken Harvey down there. You think he's cold, but he's sucking it up. I don't even see a bonnet on his head. He has no bonnet on. But the stand of the cold for about four hours manning this highly sophisticated technical equipment has done a fantastic job. A lot of people appreciate it. 
Third down and four now for Plunkett and the Raiders. Look at that. Underhand he goes to Mark Van Eek, and He's got a first down and more. As Jim Plunkett gets innovative, shuffles the ball underhand to Mark Van Egan, and the end result is a first down out to the 39-yard line. <laughs> I'll tell you, innovative is underestimating it because he was looking for survival. He's waiting for somebody to get open downfield. Van Egan uses his head, slides off the block, puts himself in a situation where he can pick up the first down by eluding one linebacker. He does, and it's first and 10 over. All right, look at Lyle Alzado mentioned how tough it is against Art Shell. They're trying to play games, anything to get in on the passer to no avail. 13-yard gain on that pass play. Now in first down, Plunkett throws in. Branch comes down with the ball. And now the Raiders have crossed midfield. And in the cold of Cleveland, they're down to the 42-yard line with 13-28 to play. Again, now he throws it underneath. Branch has been double teamed most of the day. They've been rolling in a zone to his side. This time he eludes the first man up on the roll, gets in between the linebackers. You let Cliff, Cliff Branch get in between linebackers, and he can operate. That good throw by Plunkett. That was good for 19 yards, Jonas. One of the fastest players in football, Cliff Branch, a 9-100 man out of Colorado, and he hasn't lost a step in his nine seasons in the NFL. Gets the big gainer for the Oakland Raiders. Hand off, Kenny King, not much there. Hard hit. Robert L. Jackson, who's a fiery guy, jumping up and down. The, he was in to make a hit along with Lyle Alzado. There was no gain on the play. Second and ten. Not only is he fiery, he's excellent against the run. Both those inside linebackers, Ambrose and Robert L. Jackson, just play that run and make it like it's a five-man line in there. You'd assume they'd be a little concerned about the throw, get back in their drop, but they haven't. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. They're trailing 12-7 in the fourth quarter. Plunkett guns it long. Raymond Chester catches the ball all the way down at the 16-yard line. That's a great catch. That was a, that's the best catch we've seen all day long. Chester caught one earlier where Darden was all over the top of him, as he was this time. But he didn't have to turn his body around and catch the ball in his hands. We mentioned the receivers have, been, have, have become a little bit more accustomed to it. But this is just a great catch. Well-thrown ball, but a great catch. So tough in this cold weather as Raymond Chester goes up high and comes down with a 27-yard gainer. And now the Raiders are challenging for what might be a go-ahead touchdown. First and 10 at the Cleveland 16-yard line. To the run, to Van Egan, not much there. The Cleveland defense braces and strikes back at Van Egan, a power runner from Colgate, who again leads the Raiders in rushing this year with over 800 yards. I hate to see him. I hate to see any offense that that thrives on running the ball on first down, trying to gain four or five yards when they can't do it. Continue to try, and they've been effective throwing the ball a little bit now in the second half. Those runs are almost a waste of time. Alzado's out. Let's see if they start pitching now. Elvis Franks, a pass rusher's in. Plunkett's looking to throw, firing. Raymond Chester, a hand on the ball at the goal line. It's going to be third down and nine for the Raiders now. This is the way the secondary sees it. And I'll tell you what, the vulnerable area right now, because the footing is better, is in the middle of the field. Plunk's lined up. He sees Raymond Chester. Would have been a great catch. Very tough conditions. Clarence Scott's a step behind. The ball's thrown a little high. Very seldom you see it that uncongested in the middle of the field. Third and nine now, so if the Raiders can't make this one go, they'll be sending out their place kicker, Chris Barr. Cleveland's leading 12-7 in the fourth quarter. 10-54 to play. Got him jumping off sides. Buck at sack on a blitz by Clarence Scott, but there are penalty markers down the line of scrimmage. Browns all left early, but they might have been drawn off. Matt Millen signaling. <laughs> they might have been, but I doubt it that time. It looked to me like two of the... On the sideline, Millen is signaling. Now he gets his information it's against Cleveland, but he's right. That was a blitz. They were trying to get to Plunkett quick. When you've got a blitz called on a day like this, you better get to the quarterback quick. Ben Dreith, the referee. Defense offside. The whole defense. So the Raiders are beneficiaries of that penalty instead of Plunkett getting sacked for a big loss. 
It's now third down and about three. Tom Flores down there looks like it's just another day at the plant for him, but I think a lot's going on inside. I'm sure he's churning inside, but he is a very stoic figure on the sideline. Shows virtually no emotion. Jim Plunkett looking into the end zone. He throws. He makes the connection. And down is Kenny King at the two-yard line. It's a first down for the Oakland Raiders as Ambrose knocked him down. So the Raiders now have a chance to take the lead if they can take it in. First and goal inside the three. Very well-run pattern and a well-thrown ball. This is a lot harder than it looks. Plunkett puts the ball right on the mark to King, who's going laterally and still finds a way to elude two tacklers before Ambrose gets to the ball. Watch King. When he makes his pattern, he stays under control, gets underneath the linebackers, gets the ball thrown at just the right time, gives him a chance to pick up the first down inside the three. And we're going to take another look at that. You see Clay Matthews just missed it. Those are important misses. These are tough yards, though. Here's Van Egan putting his head down close to the goal line. The clock runs inside. Ten minutes to play now. 9.55 left to go. Cleveland leading by five points. But the Oakland Raiders almost down to the Cleveland goal line. Just about on the one-yard line, Down. That's a big play on first down if you pick up two yards. They seem to be having a little more success to the right side where Mickey Marvin and Henry Lawrence are playing. They've, they've at times created pretty good movement. I think they'll go there again. Van Egan. No signal. He didn't get there. The Browns hold again. Their defensive line stops the run again. And now it'll be third down and goal. Coach Flores. Don, again, you get the feeling. Now, watch the offensive line surge. You'll see very little of it. It comes to a standstill. You're just trying to find any crack you can. They went over Marvin and Lawrence again with Dolby helping. Everybody got knocked up or knocked down. They, they settled on the six-inch line. And now Jim Plunkett wants some counsel from the sideline. As we have third down coming up, the nose of the ball almost at the goal line. 9.26 to play in the game. And the Oakland Raiders trailing by five points. John Brody. Don, you know when they went over on the sideline, they called a timeout to make a decision. Are they going in two downs, or are they going to try for a field goal? They're going in two. I don't see any way they'd try. Plunkett might call his own number. Van Egan makes no doubt about it. Mark Van Egan crashes into the end zone, and the Oakland Raiders take the lead. The Raiders take the lead 13 to 12 with 9.22 left to play. Van Egan with two touchdown runs from the yard out. Don, I do not know what the effect of the wind is, but I notice all the drives have been going this way, the way the Raiders are going right now. It seems to be a little bit easier to, to move the ball down the field. We mentioned that Cleveland was getting the best of it early in the ball game. They did not turn any of their plays, their drives into touchdowns. As a result, Oakland comes back late with a little bit of momentum. Now they've got the lead 13 to 12 and the right direction. Statistician Steve Dans pointing out that one was an 80-yard drive in 12 plays. Chris Barr drives the point after. He makes it go. And so Barr with his second conversion after a second Mark Van Egan touchdown run. And the Oakland Raiders have 14 points on the board and a two-point lead with 9.22 left to play. The Browns get the kickoff when we come back. Second time in this playoff game, the Oakland Raiders have come from behind, and now they lead the Cleveland Browns 14-12 with 9.22 left to play in the game. Chris Barr kicks a short kickoff. Fielded on the second half by Dino Hall. He's been a great player today for Cleveland, and look at Dino Hall take it out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Chris Barr, the kicker, finally got him. This Hall's had a big day for the Browns. Sure, he had a big day, and I'll tell you what, the kick looked as if it might, they might get lucky. It depends on the bounce, but look at the at the kickoff team in the center of the field. Generally, they're selling out, they're going all out, trying to create any sort of action they can to let their pals recover for them. Now they're they're backing off at the 30-yard line, trying to keep them from allowing any hole to develop. However, it does, they can't get their footing, Hall finds a hole, almost breaks it for even farther. 24-yard return of that kickoff by Dino Hall. The Browns know how to come back, though. They've come back all year. They lost their first two, three of their first five. 
Then they ran off a nine win and two mark the rest of the regular season to win the AFC Central. Now they have to come back again. Sight throws long. Pruitt cruising over near the ball, but it's out of bounds. Ryan Sight went down. Matt Millen came out of blitz. They're going to try to blitz him a little bit more because playing that man-to-man -man defense, you don't help yourself by dropping your linebackers into the pattern when you're leaving a one-on-one -on -one situation out at the corner. So they're going to try and get to Sipe any way they can. Very difficult with the down lineman getting to the quarterback because of the footing. But if you can fool somebody and break a linebacker clean, you can disturb his pattern. That was what they were concerned about, giving Sipe enough time because the bump and run Takes a little while for the receivers to free themselves. Side blocks, throws an out pattern. Greg Pruitt going for the ball. It's going to be third down. For some reason, it seems to be a bit harder throwing the ball into the wind. Not that it always isn't a little bit harder, but the wind doesn't appear to be as big a factor if you look at the flags and the way they're blowing as it, as it is in the production. Neither teams move the ball very well going from left to right. Eight minutes and 58 seconds left to play in the game as the Cleveland Browns break the huddle. Third down and 10 coming up. Cleveland now trailing 14-12. Blitz, side stands in, he throws. Rucker goes high, but it's incomplete at the 40. And Cleveland has punt the ball back to the Oakland Raiders. You know it's going to be a blitz situation, Don. Hendricks is fiddling around at the line of scrimmage. He tries to find an opening, creates a little bit of movement, but they pick it up pretty well. Mike Pruitt stays in there, takes him out of the play, but they couldn't get anybody loose downfield. You remember Johnny Evans' last punt with the big roll, 61 yards, his longest of the season. And Raiders have a couple of guys back now. Ira Matthews is back along with Pete Moody. Fair catch is signal for and made back at the 27-yard line. Keith Moody gets the ball for the Raiders, and the Oakland offense comes back out. So the game clock shows 8.45 left to play. And this next week in San Diego, that's Lake Erie. And you can walk all the way to Buffalo right now. <laughs> Hand off. Kenny King to the 31-yard line. Good gain on a first and 10 run. He got to the 31-yard line. Gain of almost five. Robert L. Jackson and Lyle L. were on the tackle. Kenny King's coming off. He's had a bad ankle done throughout the, the last four or five weeks of the season. It looked as if he'd be healthy starting the ball game, and he's, it's held up throughout the first three quarters of play, but he limped off on that play, and that's a big minus as far as Oakland's concerned. Remember the one game we saw him at Denver, John, when he was limping going into the game. Yeah, well, he's, he's been limping in a lot of them, but he's been playing well anyway. Hand off. Arthur Whittington runs and not too far. Robert Jackson puts him down and adds something to it. Tell you what, the enthusiasm hasn't dwindled on either side today. There's a lot of hitting going on. Both sides giving up ground grudgingly. I don't think the ground's the place to travel today. Kenny King, who averaged eight yards a run as a senior at Oklahoma, and it's been a big factor in Oakland's success this year going off. One of about eight acquisitions, that's all. Block is running with 7.30 left to play in the game. Third down, six. Plunkett stands in, swings it out, and Arthur Whittington has the ball. And the Raiders have a first down out to the 42-yard line. Charlie Hall makes the knockdown. You just see them every time they throw that ball to their backs on little crossing patterns against the grain patterns. They get the linebackers in their deep drop. It's a gimme. We saw them throw it to King on a third down situation on their way in for a touchdown. Now we see them get their, their backers back, throw it to Whittington underneath. He picks up a first down. That's when it's tough for the defense to operate. It's tough for everybody to operate today in a frozen playing field. They're doing remarkably well. Van Egan on a first down carry gets nothing. Derek Jensen in the game. In my opinion, I don't think Cleveland respects the throw on first down. They know that Oakland's tendency is to run the ball every time they got a first, every time they have a first down, unless they throw it deep. Well, you can see 
Andros is jumping in that hole again as he's done all afternoon and it's almost impossible to blow people out of there. Black continues to run, 6.20 to go. 6.20 to play in the game. The Raiders holding to a two-point lead, have it second down and over 10. Lost about a half yard. Plunkett getting more time, looking to run. He's going to get hammered. And coming up to get him is Elvis Franks, a rookie from Moorhead State. Elvis Franks took aim on him and then swooped on over and made the knockdown. All right, it looks like, hey, Jim, come off to one of your halfbacks. But if you watch closely, you'll notice both of his backs are in there trying to help him block. He's got three wide receivers down the field. He's trying to wait for one of them to break open. Gets plenty of time to throw, but he has no one to, to lay the ball off to. Nobody at all. And now third down arises, so the Browns, unless the Raiders can hit the big play, will get it back on a punt. Clock running, 5.50 to play. Oakland 14, Cleveland 12. AFC Divisional Playoff game. Now we have a timeout call. Those timeouts could loom large down the line. That, both the sides. One yes, Oakland. sir. Now they have one left. From games, the outcome has been decided in the final minute. Once it was decided after time had actually elapsed in that game of Minnesota on that desperation path. That was a loss, but most of them have been victories. The pitchers compared there. Brian Seifel and Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett has his work cut out now, as do the Raider blockers, as they have third down and 19 coming up. They go to a draw, and Mark Van Egan crashes ahead, and they stop him short of the first down. That's a good call. I know you'd say, hey, we've got to try and get the first down, but they're third down and 21 or 22 or 19 yards to go. That is an effective call. It changes the field position. It, it allows Oakland to punt on fourth down, get Cleveland back inside their own 20, and it's been very tough moving the ball from your own 20-yard line today. Van Egan makes a fine run, picks up about 14 yards, fourth down and five. So the Browns will get it back. The Cardiac Kids, they call them in Cleveland. They got songs about it. They have a song about the Cardiac Kids that, to the 12 Days of Christmas tune. It sold 150,000 copies so far. Dino Hall standing back. This is Ray Guy who really put away the Houston Oilers near the end with those booming punts time after time. And his punts have been a big factor today. Hits it high, but not very far. He's got to talk to Johnny Evans. Evans gets his to take a big hop. It's like playing in an ice in an ice cone with a 150 degree uh, compression ball. It just doesn't come off your foot. Not very well has it come off the feet today. Next Sunday, January 11th, the San Diego Chargers meet the winner of today's game for the AFC Championship. And of course, the winner of that goes on to defend the AFC in the Super Bowl. Where seven of the last nine champions have been American Conference teams. NBC's coverage begins at 4.30 with NFL 80. Join host Brian Gumbel for an inside look at the AFC Championship game. And then the matchup at San Diego. The Chargers, the home team, the victor here will be the visiting team. And with the Raiders up 14-12, the Browns have a long way to go and not a low, whole lot of time remaining. But they got a whole lot of enthusiasm existing in the stands. They stood up right now. They know the game is getting underway. 4.39 left to play. Brian Seip calls his own number. Takes off. He's not going. Oh, a free football. A free ball. Lester Hayes again goes up in the air about 10 feet, so that means the Raiders have the ball. Don, you just know there's a chance of a turnover when a quarterback has to run the ball and cannot find an area to get out of bounds. Three or four times in a ball game, if you get away with it, you're fortunate. Here comes Hendricks trying to put some pressure on sight. Henry Shepard has him patrolled. The problem was Reggie Rucker fell down just as Sipe was trying to hit him. That's the only option he had left, and that ball went popping. Burgess Owens, who came to the Raiders as a, for a sixth-round draft choice in the Jets, where he'd twice been a Pro Bowl player. I don't know who hit him, but there was quite a collision in there. Well, the Raiders get the ball the turnover and they have it first and 10 at the 24 yard line now they'll look to run the clock and he can run and the clock continues to wind down 4.18 to go and running Robert L. Jackson made the stop 
Don, they'd like to do two things. They'd like, like to run the clock, but they'd like to get the ball in the end zone. Oh, yes. How many times have teams been ahead of Cleveland with two minutes to play or less, put Brian Sipe in a position of creating the decision of the ball game, and there's something about the last two minutes, things seem to go right when they're playing in Cleveland Stadium. So if you're Oakland, you got two considerations. Port from the sideline, John and Lyle Alzado leaving the game. He is the flu. And had to go out. Second down and nine. Here's Van Egan. Thundering runner takes it down to the 16-yard line. That was a big seven-yard gain, my friend. He got it to within one yard of a first down. There's three and 330 left to go in the ball game. That keeps the clock running, gives him an excellent chance to pick up a first down on third and one. Van Egan's been a money back. He said he might be unknown in certain places, but he knows he's not underrated in the National Football League. For five straight years, he's been the, later, the leading rusher for the Oakland Raiders, a number three draft pick back in 74 out of Colgate. The only Raider ever to rush for 1,000 yards per season for three consecutive years. He had some injury problems this year. Got up to 838. So in the playoffs, he's going to be a 1,000-yard rusher for the year, counting all the games, and he's the money rusher for the Oakland Raiders as now they have a third down and one, and right back to Van Egan. Mark Van Egan takes it into the middle and gets it down to the 14-yard line. Boy, it's very close to a first down. Just depends on the spot. 2.50 to play. Raiders think they have the first down. This is when first downs become all important, and I don't think they got it. Looks like they spotted the ball about a foot short. Now it's now it's decision time because if they didn't get it, do you go for a field goal, take the chance on it being blocked, but get yourself over three three point lead? They're about six inches short. Of course, the Browns could still win it with a field goal. They're down by two points. Short yardage situation. The Raiders are going for it, but look at Dick Ambrose. He knows where the ball's going. It's the inches that make the differences in the big games. Ambrose has stuffed the middle all day long. Fourth and an inch. And the clock running. 2.39. 2.38 left to go. Oakland 14. Cleveland 12. Three tight ends are in. Derek Jensen in motion. They go to Van Egan. He didn't get it. I don't think he got it. The Cleveland Browns come up. Making the strike was Robert L. Jackson and Dick Ambrose. The lineman cleared out the lineman and the linebackers took charge. The Browns offense has come out. They're quite sure that Oakland didn't get there, but the ball has to be spotted and then we have to check. Well, if they spot this one over the first down marker, they have made an unjust decision because those line those linebackers are in on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Ambrose oh, again, yeah. Robert L. Jackson. No way he got there. It's very close by the spot. But no, that's correct. All right, they start up in Cleveland. Second down and 10, he was going to Reggie Rucker. And the game clock is down to 217. We've mentioned how what a difficult job both cornerbacks have had all day long. Dwayne Osteen and Lester Hayes. They've been put in one-on-one -on -one situations all day. Go along with Mike Davis. Now they're in a five-back defense. But these fellas have had to play those wide receivers for Cleveland man-to-man -man all day long. Sipes had plenty of time to throw. Whatever way it goes, it's been a heck of a performance on their part. A throw down the field. The ball is caught by Ozzie Newsom, and he almost broke it. Ozzie Newsom gets out to the 44-yard line, and on second and 10, the Cleveland Browns get the big gainer, and the clock winds down to two minutes. 
anybody, anybody can fall down in conditions like this, but watch Sipe hang in there. You talk about great quarterbacks. He got absolutely level, but still had an ability to get the ball off down the field to Ozzie Newsom. We mentioned one-on-one -on -one coverage. Otis McKinney falls down, but watch this play. To get a hold of Ozzie Newsom, he saved the touchdown. That would have put Cleveland on top. Instead, they've got good field position, but they're two points down. 30 below zero in Cleveland, Ohio, but the heat's on now. Two minutes left to play, and the Cleveland Browns on a 29-yard pass play have the ball out to the 43-yard line. John, what about the strategy of Oakland? Okay, you can say, why didn't they go for the field goal? They were not automatic. They've made about, about less than 40% of those tries. They know if they can keep the ball, they can then run out the clock. If not, they have to kick off. Field position would have been good. And Cleveland still has to score. They had to move it just as far to kick a field goal as they would have had to make a touchdown. Sorry, lets it go long and overthrows Greg Pruitt. You know, so often, Don, you get into strategy situations and you don't take the field conditions into effect. It would have been a very safe choice for Flores to say, OK, kick the field goal and then we're taking the safe way out. We can grab ourselves a five-point lead, which wasn't automatic. But if we can make one inch, we can gain control of the ball, run the clock down, and then we'll put the icing on the cake. I'd say it would have been easier to pick up an inch than kick a field goal in that situation. So I've got to agree with it no matter which way it comes out. 154 left to play. 154 left to go. The Cleveland Browns come out. Second down and 10 at their 43. And they trail 14-12. Sipe. Hemmed in, grabbed by Big Bear, John Matuzak. They blew it dead at the 45, so it's going to be third down at about nine now. I would expect them to call a timeout. They've got three remaining. That's two of them. They do. 148 left to play, and the Cleveland Browns signal for and are allotted a timeout. You know, Don, so many times the team will ask, and I've mentioned that Oakland has been playing bump and run, man-to-man -man defense all afternoon. It's the personality of Oakland to do that. Lester Hayes is one of the few fellas that can nullify a receiver in a bump and run and still be quick enough to catch up with the ball after it's thrown. And for them to go in a zone at this point would be totally against their personality and make it very tough. They're still keeping a free safety back there. They figure that's the way to operate. They didn't take a timeout. 124 left to go. Third down and 10. Sight throws. Incomplete. Oh, but there's a penalty marker down. And it'll be a first down for the Cleveland Browns at the 44-yard line. Reggie Rucker was interfered with. And you can see the two officials saw the play simultaneously. One of them thought it was a penalty. One of them didn't. The flag was thrown. He had a perfect angle on the play. Looked to me as if Osteen got away with a little something. Those fellas are watching close. Clock, as you see, down to 119 left to play. The season ends for either the Cleveland Browns or the Oakland Raiders. Illegal contact, number 35, at five yards and a first down. He bumped, oh, Dwayne Osteen bumped and ran a little bit farther downfield than you're allowed to. What he did is he waited on him, Don. He waited on him down about the 10, 12-yard line, was going was gonna to jam his route and made contact, and that was the call. It was not interference. Contact down there at 10 yards. But the Browns would have come up with fourth and 10 and that penalty not come down. Now they have it first and 10 at their 49 yard line. 119 to go. 14 to 12 Oakland. Monty, Monty Jackson in the ball game for the first time. Sipe stands in, throws. Greg Pruitt caught the ball inside the 30. Greg Pruitt, who's had an injury trouble year, the great, great back from Oklahoma. Goes down the field and goes up in the air and comes down with the ball at the 28. They're picking the vulnerable area. They've got Osteen in the middle of the field playing man-to-man -man on a bat. Seif is not going to let that go untried. Osteen's had a lot of success. He's lost a few throughout the afternoon. But you can see he and Mike Davis are having all the trouble they can have inside, underneath. They're going to try to go to Ozzie Newsom or they're back. Greg Pruitt's caught five balls today for 37 yards. That was the biggest one as the Browns now have the ball at the 28-yard line with 1.12 left to go. Cleveland trailing by two. Sight looks at a blitz, lofts the ball up. 
Ozzie Newsom catches out. the ball, but he's ruled out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And the game clock is down to 106 to play. It's something. It is. It's almost expected. When you see the Browns with the ball at home with two minutes to play, this game is just getting underway. Two points down. Field goal is not a certainty if you get it within the 10 yard line. You can recall they missed an extra point. They've missed two field goals from close range going the exact same way they're going now. If they have a chance, they're going to try to get it in the end zone. Second down and 10 coming up for the Cleveland Browns. Rucker and Dave Logan deployed wide to the right. Newsom is split out to the left at the top of your screen on second down and 10. A draw play to. He's inside the 20-yard line. He's down inside the 15-yard line. He's down to the 9-yard line, the 14-yard line. And he has a first down for Cleveland. Big call and a big, big result. They call timeout. They've still got, a, they've still got two left, though. 56 seconds left to play. What do you do? You run the ball in the line and think Cockrip can go down the field, kick it from 30 yards. They've got two timeouts left, but really not it. In my opinion, they better try and score it. Sype will, yeah. will throw it in the chief seats if anybody's covered. But I think it's easier to complete a pass than it would be to convert a field goal. Short field goal attempts are no good deal today in this cold. Don Cockcroft, two of four today. If you're an offensive quarterback, I will not try Lester Hayes, though. They've done that a couple times and come up empty. And Lester's come up with the ball. White has a no-show. That's support. It's great. It's been a great football game, no matter how it turns out, Don, under the most inclement conditions I've ever seen. There's been a lot of great plays in very, very adverse conditions. That's true. Now it's first and ten for Cleveland. Back to the run. This time Oakland's looking for it. Ryan Sipe signals for and gets a timeout with 49 seconds to play. Mike Pruitt carried the ball. I think the last time they called timeout, they came over disgusted and said, let's see if we can break a draw on first down. He's going over to the sideline, in my opinion, to try and get that ball thrown upstairs. That end of the field has had sunshine on it most of the day. There's a little left cross down it than the other end, the closed end, where there's a lot of ice down there. Well, we've seen we've seen one ball mishandled for an ex, you know, for a for a fake field goal. We've seen two balls missed on field goals. We've seen an extra point hit the uprights, and I haven't seen anything go through down there. 49 seconds left to play in the game. The Browns, Brian Sipe, Sam Rotigliano. What a combination they've been. Sipe was on the bench when Rotigliano came here. Rotigliano waiting a long time to get here. Here the discussion took place. Sam's elected to get as much as he can on the ground, I believe. Right up the middle. 49 seconds to go. Wrong. Into the end zone. Was it intercepted? I think Oakland, got Oakland it. intercepted the ball. Michael Davis is the man that picked it off. That's just a great play at a, at a very critical time. It even looked like Newsom might have come up with it. The Raiders didn't believe it for about five or ten seconds. It was a one-handed stab. He was one-on-one -on -one with Ozzie Newsom. How he came up with that ball is a miracle. 41 seconds left in the Raiders' intercept. And they might have iced this one, no pun intended. Newsom looked, he thinks the ball's going to get to him. Okay. Here's Davis. All day long, he's been one-on-one -on -one with a free safety. With so what? You're not going to get that much help because he can't get started. Newsom's trying to run his pattern. Davis cuts in front of him, picks the ball off. That's just a fantastic interception. It really was. Mike Davis intercepts. Lester Hayes had two earlier. And 41 seconds are now separating the Oakland Raiders from the AFC Championship game next Sunday at San Diego. Thirty seven seconds left thirty six Browns call a timeout. Thirty six seconds left to play. NFL report is next. We'll be talking to some of those Oakland Raiders if they prevail in this game. And right now the odds are greatly in their favor after the brilliant interception in the end zone 
by Mike Davis, the strong safety in his third year out of Colorado. I'll say they're in their favor. All the quarterback has to do right now is fall down on one knee. The Browns have two timeouts left. That is not enough to stop the clock from running off 36 seconds. And I'm sure that Sam Retigliano is going to be in a position of catching a lot of flack because he didn't go for the safe, the safe decision, which would have been to try and put Cockroft on the spot to kick a field goal. But in retrospect, I have to agree with him. Brian Seip, I think, had as good a chance to throw a touchdown pass as he did for Cockroft to kick a field goal. Now, that's up for anybody's conjecture, and it's easy to have 20-20 vision after the fact. But, uh, he, in fact, if he had his decision to do it over again, considering the, the outcome, obviously he'd have a go at the field goal, but he doesn't. That's what put head coaches on the spot. He's been right an awful lot of the time. This time it didn't work out that way. Well, the Browns are here because of Brian Seip and the year he's had, but now the Oakland Raiders coming up, as the Oakland Raiders have done so many times over the years. In the big games, they're so tough to beat. The winningest consecutive years franchise in the history of the league. 16 straight winning seasons at Oakland. And now the wild card Raiders, as the clock winds down inside 20 seconds, are ready to head to San Diego in the AFC Championship game against their arch rivals from the AFC West, the San Diego Chargers. And you'll see that next Sunday, beginning at 4.30 here on NBC. What a victory for the Oakland Raiders, coming from behind twice in this game. And they win it as the clock goes down and out.